Hello everyone, and welcome back to another roaring episode of the Essays and Espresso Podcast. Here with me are my co-hosts, Acer and Boken. Acer, how are you? I'm good. And Boken, how are you? Good. I'm glad that you're giving me back the same level of energy. I really appreciate it. (laughs) Today we're going to be talking about transitioning to a new console generation. We'll probably also talk a little bit about the PS5 event. Probably, maybe, I don't know. Depends on how the conversation goes. You know how it is. Yeah. But uh, Also, we're recording this just a few days after the event. Whenever you're listening to this, maybe... It may be out of vogue by then. It might be. So, what we say will probably just be horribly out of date, and we'll all look very stupid. But, you know, we're used to that kind of thing. Yes. So, lately, I've been watching some anime. Oh, wow. What a shock. What a shock. The The weep of the podcast was watching anime. I'd say Boken watches more anime than I do, though. I do not accept that. Me neither. <laughs> That's two to one, Daniel. I don't watch currently where airing anime. I, you always bring that <laughs> shit up. I don't understand how, why that is important. I honestly don't. Because it means if you, that you are this, because it means you, you are actively watching amount. more anime than I am. No. Because yes. if you watch the same amount of old anime as I watch new anime, that doesn't make you any less of a fucking weep. But I, I don't think I do. I really don't. Well, think then don't I make do. the argument that I watch seasonal stuff, because that has nothing to do with anything. Yes, it does. I'm no. I'm saying I don't think I watch as old anime as much as you watch new anime. That's not what you said. <laughs> what do you mean? That's not what I said. That's, but that's the implication. Oh, I see. Oh, wow. What a what a roaring start to this episode. Let's start arguing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Anyways, that's beside the point. So I've been rewatching some stuff. Oh, what a... Um, oh, he didn't say it again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so uh, I, I've only seen a couple episodes of it, but I've, I've started rewatching Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, you can't and, say uh, anything pa- about it. I haven't watched this. I've watched one episode. You can't spoil it. Oh, God. How... How are you still on this earth and have not fully watched Bebop? You know. So you're probably never going to watch it, are you? I'm going to watch it. So it doesn't really... It's like every a it's single person on this planet except you It's like a Cowboy jazzy Bebop. coffee cowboy show in space. That sounds no. fine. Yes, it is. It sounds fine. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll only, I'm only going to talk about the first two episodes. I haven't seen episode two. You can't spoil that. No, I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> no, I go ahead. All right, so episode one is about uh, this thug that uh, steals some drugs. His name is Roy. No, I know his name's no. Spike. <laughs> no, oh. that's the main character. The guy that stole the drugs, his name is Azamar. That's a dumb name. Whatever. Anyways, so he and his girlfriend are trying to escape to Mars. And oh, yeah, by remember. stealing all these drugs... Uh, he has got a bounty on his head, and now that's when Spike comes in, and he's got to take him out. Now, this Spike fellow, is he the main character still? Yes, Spike is the main character. This is the laziest, this is the laziest I've ever tried to derail one of your conversations. <laughs> I've never put this nice little energy... derailing it by asking questions about <laughs> <Yeah, so>. <laughs> <laughs> Like That's what I was thinking. I'm like, this isn't really derailing. I know, it's like there's no energy behind it. <laughs> but yeah so i want to say it's been like 15 years since i've watched bebop so yeah uh, i wasn't sure how well the show would hold up upon a rewatch but so far i think the show is still as good as i remember uh the art and animation is fan Fantastic. I think the only part uh, that kind of made me side eye was in episode two, uh, when Spike is is getting is in a fist fight with another character. They kind of they don't actually show the fight. They just show like the aftermath of and like Spike is like, "Oh, you're pretty good." And I'm like, "Ah, come on." Yeah. 
but you know whatever budget have constraints you, i'm sure have you watched the uh what's his name eye patch wolf video on it i have not okay i think that video lays down pretty well why that show doesn't even ho- doesn't not only hold up but it becomes better the older you get mm. interesting i'll have to give that a watch daniel yeah, is old we know that that is true i am old are you still in your 20s i'm 30 oh oh fuck <laughs> Boken totally deflated but yeah it's so, basically so a again, can't say too much but uh first two episodes have been really enjoyable and uh Hopefully, by the time we record again, I, I'll have finished my rewatch. Wait, Daniel, you don't even have kids. No, I don't. Uh, my my dad became a grandfather when he was... I want to say 38. Good for him? Well, I'm just saying, you're. why are you taking so long? Why don't you get a good wife and have <laughs> kids? What are you doing here I- on this nerd podcast? <laughs> Because I want to wait for the right person. I don't want to just, like, Aww. grab any old, you know, chick. That's very, Isn't that cute? It's very romantic of you. <laughs> yes, I, I am a hopeless romantic. But Speaking um, of hopeless romantic, you also watched Alvin Lee. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you got to balance the good with the bad, right? Yeah. So, uh, I've I started re-watching Elfin Lee. I'm up to episode seven. And uh, if Bebop was as good as I remember, then Elfin Lead is even worse than I remember. <laughs> uh, when I first watched Elfin Lead, I hated it. Rewatching it now, I fucking hate it. So, so you're not going to keep watching it? I wish we had done this for the podcast, honestly. Well, you should well, have suggested um, it. The- well, the reason why I'm rewatching is because another friend of mine is doing a discussion and he wanted me to uh, talk about it. And I'm like, well, I, I, I got to rewatch it now for my friend's sake. And you know, Daniel, when me or Boken recommends Alvin Lee for the next essay topic, you're going to have to rewatch it yet again. Oh, joy. I can rewatch it a third time. Or I can just refer to my notes. No, you can't do that. I write a detailed set of notes per episode. Oh, wow. Well, you'll have to delete them first. I actually didn't do <laughs> any research for the uh, for the Watchmen episode. I didn't write any notes for that either. No, I mean, I didn't even read it or watch the movie or anything. I was all for memory. I see. Anyway. But, but um, so... Just to get an idea of some of my notes. <laughs> so I said that the opening is beautiful because, you know, I think that's one of the few good things you could say about the show. That the music is very nice and it's kind of an interesting opening. It's different. Would you like um, to, would you sing us a few of the notes? Sing to us? N- no, because it's in like operatic Latin. Okay. Are you I not? I don't think you want to. I'm not confident in my singing okay. voice in the slightest. Okay, then. Yes. So, the show suffers from weird whiplash, where, uh, like, even in the first episode, the first episode seems to get praised more than any other episode, but even it suffers from this, where, like, there's, like, this weird whiplash, where you have this, like, oh, like, this really, really ditzy girl, who's, like, really clumsy, and she has, like, this, uh, like, tr- this, this cup of tea that she's holding on a tray for so, I don't understand why it's on a tray, and she has such a hard time holding this tray and keeping the tea steady like it's so stupid and then like you so you have this like ditzy dumb clumsy girl who you would see in like a low tier slice of life anime like handshakers yeah maybe i don't know we have to watch that first uh but she gets caught up in 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 like so like the first episode starts with the main character lucy or she's one of the main characters, at least. Um, she's walking around naked, and she has these powers that allow her to rip people apart and throw things so fast that, like, it, it you know, goes through their... Like, she'll grab, like, a pen and throw it through someone's brains, you know? Like, 
her her powers are like fucking insane and and then this ditzy girl like trips in front of lucy and then gets her head ripped off and then her body is used as like a bullet sponge what yeah it's so weird right because like she's like she she falls and trips in front of lucy with you know spills the tea and she sees the director and she's like, oh, I'm so sorry, director. I'm so clumsy. And then, boom, she's fucking dead. And it's, what? It's so weird. Is this it's, is this show like like Code Geass, where they're just throwing together a bunch of, of ideas that have no cohesion whatsoever? Basically. Like I, so- I thought Evan Lead, I, I don't know anything about the show, but I always associate it with a lot of gore. And there just, is a lot yeah, of gore. Teenage edginess. I wouldn't associate it with fan service and clumsy anime girls. Oh, <laughs> my good man. My good man. Because I there believe is... those two things do not go together. They don't. <laughs> but they do in this show, whether it works or not. So believe me, when I t- believe me when I tell you that literally half the show is super edgy, over the top, gory, schlock and the other half is boring saccharine cringy slice of life trash and the main girl she has like two personalities doesn't she one where she's like a cat and the other where she's like a really depressed girl um sort of yes so like she has a split personality disorder and like she wavers um for like the triggers seem to happen like randomly but like sometimes she'll regress to like yeah like you said kind of like a cat where she's like she's very childlike and innocent and uh very dumb and not like she doesn't even know how and to very speak naked spoken she's very naked yeah she's she's very open about her nakedness she doesn't cuz she doesn't understand oh um, of course and then the, the other half of and the other half of her is lucy where she is a brutal, ruthless, like killer, and yeah, kind kind of depressed, but more more so just like really ruthless and very uh very much a bitch. I guess, I guess is the best way to put it. Does does that get resolved in any way? The split personality. Um, I, upon this rewatch, I like. I, I want to say it was like seven years ago since my first watch of the show, so I don't re- really remember if that gets resolved. Uh, actually, I think the end of the show leaves it vague. Oh. <laughs> and pr- I, now that I think about it, I think the final episode, it's it's one of those things where like they kind of leave it up in the air like, oh, maybe she stays as new the 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 uh, the innocent girl or maybe she stays as lucy and I, I don't, that kind of thing i can just uh, i, so I I'm, yeah. I'm listening i'm listening really intently and i can just hear the 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 the, the clockwork start gearing up in bogan's head <laughs> <laughs> is this something um, is this bad enough that you would watch it bogan i'm not sure because it 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 sounds very cynical, like as in we gave the main character two personalities so we can just make two different parts of the show that don't fit together. And if those don't go well with one another and they never get resolved, then what's the fucking point? <laughs> that that doesn't uh, <laughs> sound like someone was really trying hard for artistic integrity or something. Like there was some kind of vision behind. Uh, I don't know. May- I don't know the show. For, Maybe I'm misjudging. I it. Mean, From memory, it's, only, it's super earnest it, and trying to be like poignant. Um, I would I would say that yes, Elfin Lead is trying. I would not. Okay. I would not accuse. I would not accuse Elfin Lead for a lack of trying. I would, especially upon this rewatch, I would just say that. Elfin lead is more so guilty of being inept. Okay. Well, that's better because there's a difference between something being like trying and failing and something just having already given up <laughs> and playing to the low to to the 
the cheap seats, you know? I mean, I would say there's a fine line between, like, earnestness and, like, being cynical. Because, like, that's just the way that I'm taking the show. I would say there's a pretty big line between earnestness and cynical (laughs) cynicism. Well, like, I mean in the sense that, like, yeah, you you could watch... I'm watching the show and I'm saying, like... I, to me, it comes across like it's being earnest and it's just failing. But like, I could doubt, I could totally see someone else watching and be like, "Oh, this is just so cynical. It's a cra- cash grab." Blah blah blah. Whatever. I, I could see both ways. Mm. Um, the reason I feel like it's more earnest than that is partly because it's also pretty low budget. Like visually, it's. I feel visually, it looks bland, but at the same time, it looks like it's trying to be unique. Like. You have the uh, Diclonus characters, which is the race that Lucy is a part of, um, that allows her to have these powers or whatever. Like their hair, all their hairstyles are very like bright and distinct colors, while everyone else has normal hair. So I feel like don't they also have horns? The, yeah, they have horns. So like I can see the attempt of like okay, they're they're trying to go for a striking art style here, where the Diclonus characters who are very violent but can also be very innocent, have this very bright and, you know, art style to them compared to the everyone else who looks more normal and muted. And while to me it looks all it all looks like shit and it's clearly a show that didn't have like a huge budget, it looked like it they at least tried to make do with what they had. Or maybe I'm wrong and they just like you know didn't care, but it's it's hard to really assume these things. I try not to. Mm. It's just my impression. The show is also incredibly stupid. Like there's a like this is the type of show that unfortunately turns me into like a cinema sins. Like I'm I just notice all these inconsistencies that just make no sense. Like it, it can range from like the main character will have a gun pointed at his face and he tries to run away. And it's like, wait! I thought the main character is a girl. No. Okay, there's two. There's two main characters. There is Lucy, and then there's this dude named Coda. And he's he literally is just a wet blanket, bland anime protagonist number five seventy eight thousand. Right? Like just there is nothing sh- to short, it. Short, <laughs> short, short brown hair because of course uh i can't say a single thing about his personality he's just there but yeah so like so like there's one part where he has a like a machine gun pointed at his face and he tries to run away right now on one hand you can say like well you know whatever he's trying to run away from danger but like i think most people would also understand like hey if you react too quickly to someone who has a gun pointed at your face then it's also very likely that they'll react and shoot you so whatever like so i there's it it ranges from that to stuff like shit that just doesn't make any sense at all you know like i I don't i don't want to i don't want to get too into it but this, this See, uh, ten, 10 minutes into this that? conversation, I don't want to get too deep into it. <laughs> uh, whenever someone has a gun pointed at someone else in a movie or TV show, they never actually shoot. Like, the other character always comes out of it alive. Do you ever sure. notice that? I mean, the point yeah. is that he... One wrong move and you're dead, but that that pretty much never happens. Uh, you mean like in Rise of Skywalker when they kept arresting the crew when they should have just killed them? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, really, just someone pointing a gun at someone else, and and just you know, just don't move. Mm. Okay. And it's 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 a situation you're not supposed to get out of because the person with the gun can just immediately shoot and kill you. But that never actually happens. Was the uh, okay. was the gun knife thing? Did that was that from a Batman thing? Do you guys know what I'm talking so, about? N- no, I don't. Uh. Well, well uh, speaking of guns, uh, that does remind me of a of a real a weird inconsistency with the show. Where, like in the first episode, there's a character with like a high caliber rifle and uh, like these these like specific, like anti tank bullets or something. And 
talk. It said <laughs> what? Yeah, whatever. The 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 point is like so. The the Diclonus race ha- have these invisible arms called vectors, and oh, that's yeah. what allows the and that's what allows them to rip people apart, gr- you know, stop bullets and, and all that stuff. So uh, the this guy brings out this this big badass rifle, and he makes a comment that like you know not even her vectors can stop this. You know, tries to shoot at her, but all he ends up doing is just knocking off her helmet, and then she f- she falls into the ocean. Right? Mm-hmm. Why is that gun and that type of bullet never used again in the whole fucking show? Is, but isn't there like is it... another little version it... of the Lucy girl who like gets torn to shreds and she's still alive? Oh yeah, Nana. Nana literally gets her arms and legs ripped off. And then uh, she replaces them with robot arms and legs. This is so dumb. So yeah, she 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 probably should have died of blood loss from having literally both her arms and legs completely torn off, but she somehow survives. Okay. But how many episodes are there? 13. Oh. I might just give that a watch. <laughs> It sounds terrible. It's uh. It's pretty bad. Why is, the, I mean, why is the show called Elfin Lead? I have you know no that? idea. It's never brought up. <laughs> Japanese people there are no Germany. elves. What can I say? There are no elves that that lie. So, is anyone <laughs> singing? Uh, no. There's no singing in the show. Okay. It's not. It's not a musical. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. I'm, I'm totally I, th- I think if I, th- I think if Elf and Lead were a musical, I think that would bump up the score for me considerably. Lucy, but there, but, we are in a doozy. No, go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, getting off that, um, I, I've also been playing through Castlevania: Order of Ecclesia. That's not what it said on the Google Doc. Shut up. <laughs> Uh, so that has been fantastic. Uh, that game is great. It's one of the best Castlevanias I've ever played. That game it's, is in my top 10 games of all time. I, I can see why. Um, one thing I really appreciate is that like most Igarashi Castlevania games are pretty easy. Like I wouldn't say they're so easy that they're brain dead, but they're not especially challenging. Right, their 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 difficulty is you know kind of in the middle, leaning a little more toward being on the easier side. This game is tough. This game does not hold your hand. This game yep. is like, like it's it's not so brutal that it feels like it's hopeless. But like the game will uh, punish you for not paying attention. The game does make sure that, uh, like, hey, if you don't understand how the mechanics work, if you don't know what you're doing. If you try to play, if you try to zone out while playing this game, you know the game's gonna s- smack your ass. Like you, you'll die. And I really appreciate that. Like even even something just as simple as like attacking requires you to pay attention because you need to, depending on what weapons you're using or the glyphs, you have to rhythmically press the X and Y buttons in order to consecutively attack. So. The game does a really good job of keeping you on your toes constantly. And I really like how the glyph system works. Whereas like something like Aria of Sorrow, where every single enemy has a soul or like bloodstained or every enemy has a shard. And while that's cool and fun in its own way, because you get tons and tons of abilities, it can lead to a grind. It can lead to like a sense of bloat. You know, it can also lead to like having a bunch of stuff that you don't need. The glyph system is more reminiscent to Circle of the Moon, whereas only very specific enemies drop glyphs. However, a huge improvement that the glyph system has over the card system in Circle of the Moon is that in Circle of the Moon, you don't know which enemies will drop cards. And it's a, you know, while in uh, Order of Ecclesia, when you kill an enemy, 
there will be like this blue afterglow or red afterglow after they die, clearly indicating this enemy will drop a glyph. You just have to kill it enough times to get it, which is a huge, huge thing because otherwise in Circle of the Moon, you could you you could miss like vital abilities pretty easily, you know. Oh, like in so, Bloodstained, when you need to, when you need like the the ability from the from the fish to go underwater, and there's no indicator that you need that specific fish or that it even can drop the ability you need. Yeah, I I don't know why they did it like that. They should have made that like a white uh, shard that you just have to get. I don't know why they did it like that in Blood. I think that's to be fair. I think that's the only time Bloodstained does that. But it is kind of like a dumb thing. But yeah, uh, so Order of Ecclesia is really awesome. Really how, enjoying how it. How far in are you? Um, I'm I'm pretty decently far. I I think most of the map is is already filled out. At least I think, unless there's like a whole other section, but. Uh, I had the double jump just to give you an idea of how far I am. Oh, well, it's been too long okay. uh, that I would remember when that happened. Did you, did you fight the shadow dude? No, I don't think okay. so. That's a pretty late game boss. Okay. I, for me, I feel like the, really the dividing line between the good and the bad Castlevanias is the difficulty. Like all the Castlevanias I like, I, I, that's why I don't like Symphony of the Night or Aria of <gasps> Sorrow. How dare you? Those games are good in their structure, but I always grow bored when I I never get challenged while I'm I'm exploring. Like I don't I just don't see the point in the exploring itself. I want to I discover new bosses and actually have a tough time fighting them. But wait a minute, if you I like Breath of the Wild? Yeah. That's so? that's a super easy game, which is only about exploration. Th that game is not super easy. What, what the, the hell are you talking what about? What the hell are you talking about? Have you ever fought a, fought a lino? Yeah, they're easy. No, you they're burn not. the grass, and then they jettison you up, and then you just shoot them with arrows. I, I don't, You yeah, know, a no. lot of people say Symphony of Night is like super easy, and I really don't think it is. I think I'm not it saying it's. Su I'm not saying it's like a challenging game or anything like that, but it's not like. Like I, I remember dying a few times playing Symphony of the Night. Like it's, it's not like I that game is a, a breeze. I remember first trying every single boss in that game. Oof! And then at some at some point I just stopped. Did you did you go through the inverted castle? Nope. The inverted the inverted castle is much more challenging. But that's yeah, also maybe, so many that, hours in. Yeah, that takes forever to get there. It does just, not take forever. It does. I've I've it, beaten at least like ten bosses or something, and I've never seen the inverted castle. This is blasphemy. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, I, I, yes, I understand. It it's a decent game. I understand why, why it got popular. It looks and sounds great and everything, but but Boken has standards, it, Daniel. But, <laughs> but the I'm telling you, the inverted castle is is a good deal tougher than like the normal castle. Yeah, whatever. and it really does not take that long to get to it. Again, I fought at least ten bosses, and it took me however many hours to get through that it's a giant game if it, if right. by hour 10 you haven't challenged me i feel like i have a right to stop it's the same with fucking final fantasy 10 where <coughs> the game is so easy up until the first seymour fight and then it kicks your ass and at that point i just don't want to deal with it anymore. See, yeah final i i final fantasy I definitely fans agree are going to be you. coming out of the woodwork spoken <laughs> I, I, I definitely agree with you with Final Fantasy X, where, like, that game is mostly brain dead, and then all of a sudden you'll come to, like, these boss fights that completely block your progress for some reason. And the problem is I already built my characters at that point. I built them on wrong premises. I was never challenged, so I was never required to figure out all the mechanics. And then I just, like, that's not how you, do, how you design a difficulty curve. And I feel like the good Castlevanias... Ex challenge you with every boss and that would be Order of Ecclesia uh, Dawn of Sorrow Circle of the Moon does that 
those games. Circle of the Moon was pretty challenging. It is. Yeah, that, Circle that's of the one Moon, of the even, ones. even the levels themselves are, are really hard. Wow. Yeah, that that I think Circle of the Moon is kind of underappreciated. I think it I think it's one of the uh, the better games and people don't really talk about it. Yep. I I will say that the animations do feel kind of stiff in that game, but you know, whatever. Uh, it's a Game Boy Advance game, you know. Sure. But um aside from Order of Ecclesia, I've also been replaying Final Fantasy 7, the original, and I I still really like that game. It's still really good. I I have to say though, replaying it has made me appreciate some aspects of the remake more. Oh. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, especially in terms of the the way that they handle the characters, because in the original, especially for the Midgar section, the Midgar section is the pacing is very very quick. Like it it goes. You, you go through the Midgar section in a flash. Like, it really doesn't feel like the game uh, belabors the Midgar section that much at all. Like, you just, you're just like, boom, 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 boom. Things are constantly happening. You're done, and then you're out in, in, the, in the world map. Yeah. So, it makes sense, going back to the remake, how, like, not only are they trying to expand that section and flesh it out, but they it also gives you more time with the characters. And I feel like Final Fantasy VII, the original, they kind of expected people to replay the game. Because, for one, it was, you know, that era of gaming was very different. Where, like, you know, it's not like now where you, you're spoiled for choice. At the time, typically speaking, when you got a game, that was like the only game you would have for a while. And I think because of that... You get a lot of different dialogue choices depending on which char- which party members you have um, during certain sequences. So, like, uh, diff- you'll get like different pieces of dialogue, and that and that's the kind of stuff that would flesh out the characters more, and you would get more of an idea of what their personalities are like. But that sort of shit's just not viable anymore in today's world. Like, that locking the, that type of like characterization, you know. It, it doesn't make sense anymore. And I would say it is a flaw of the original that, like, it is harder to get, like, a good feel for these characters unless you, you know, really see all of their dialogue like that. Remember but at in, the same... What's up? Remember in Final Fantasy IX where you would randomly get these these little side uh, cutscenes, but you can only choose between one of the characters... And you have like three stories to choose from and you will never see the other ones. And you only see the names of the stories. So you don't even know what character you're going to follow when you click on it. No, that's not true. You got to see all of them. What? No. Yeah. What are you talking? What? Yeah, you. I, I always got... I, I don't remember it working like that at all. I remember being able to see all of them. You would... You, How? You would, you would enter a screen and then it would leave you it will give you some options like okay you can see this one or that one yeah. and then what you do and you enter another screen then it brings it back up yeah but i th- i feel like there were parts of the game where you only got you you got three stories to pick from and then the part was over and you never got the other two no i i remember being able to get the other ones you just need to like trigger them again uh, okay maybe Okay, I'll, I'll, you know what? To be fair, I'd need to replay FF9 to, like, really be sure because I'm going based off, like, 10-year-old memories, so... I mean, I, I remember sometimes, yes, you you then got two stories, the two you didn't pick and stuff, but I feel like at some parts of the game, there were more options than you got triggers. I will, I will say, I think it was... A little too easy in ff9 to be able to make it so that you would uh like let's say you didn't know how to progress the story at that point and you got that and then you could uh trigger the next story segment and then you couldn't you could no longer see the active time events anymore yeah i think so yeah i think that's what happened um but 
Yeah, I, but the, the thing is, I think FF, I think FF9 had the right idea though in with those active time events because it gave, um, it gave more of an opportunity for the characters to shine compared to FF7. Um, but the thing is, I feel like FF9's narrative focus was on the characters much more than Seven. I feel like with Seven, it's much more plot focused and theme focused. Um, with exception to Cloud, I feel like FF7 does a great job with Cloud's character. Like, they... Most of the party in FF7, this isn't to, like, say that they're bad or anything, but I really don't feel like the party is super fleshed out compared to Cloud. Where, like, in the original, they, like, FF... Uh, in the original FF7, Cloud's character is handled very, very, very well. Um... But yeah, uh, wait. You're FF7... saying in the remake, Cloud isn't characterized? No, no, no. I'm saying in the in the original, he's characterized very well, and I'm saying in the remake, they they also do a good job. Oh, okay. I, I'm, I'm 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 saying that the remake actually does a better job than the original in how it characterizes the characters in general. Like I feel like I because a. Uh, Again, I'm blaming this more so on like an outdated design sensibility uh, for FF7, the original. But like, I feel like the remake does, takes all of the different like characteristics and personality quirks that you're supposed to gather from the characters through multiple playthroughs, and they were able to condense it and sh and bring it all to light in the remake. You know, just by naturally playing the game, if that makes sense. Yeah, I feel like, though, that, I mean, every character had, like, an area devoted to fleshing them out in the original. Um, that's true, but, like, but prob the, I, the remake yeah, is... Yeah, I, I haven't played the remake. It's entirely possible the remake does it better. I I believe it does. Okay. And, and to be clear, I still prefer the original overall. I, I find the original more fun to play. I think the pacing is way better. Um, like, I also just like the charm of the original. Like that, I, I just think the original is a really fun game to play, and I love the, uh, you know, the visuals. I love the music. I love, even though the characters aren't as arguably as well characterized or as fleshed out compared to the remake, I still really like their quirkiness in the original. Um, the original to me is still a fantastic game. I think it still holds up really well. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's really fucking good. So anyways, Acer, what have you been up to? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. I played Deus Ex. Is this for the first time? No, I've, or... I've played it before. Okay. I've never completed it before, though. I always got to some point in the game, and then I was like, oh, yep. This this just keeps going, doesn't it? <laughs> I think I, I think I was in the same boat as you when I first tried to play Deus Ex. I got to a certain point and I I was like, I'm just gonna put this down, come back later, and and come back later and everything. <laughs> you never come back later. <laughs> no. Not in these games. No. no. I, I'll probably I'm, like if I do come back to it, I'm gonna replay it from the start because I I I don't remember <laughs> anything about uh, what I was doing. Yeah, but uh, it's a, it's interesting. Deus Ex, I liked it. Uh, so it's uh, obviously a really revolutionary game. A lot of people's favorite game. I think it is. Uh, I, I, th I don't think it's as good as like System Shock Two. I think it has a much much bigger scope than that game does. And uh, I wonder why more games haven't done that thing where like. Uh, it, it it features branching narrative where it's like just, oh, hey, you know, apprehend the NSF leader or kill Anna Navarro before she kills him or kill him yourself or, you know, there's so many ways of going about doing this stuff. I don't understand why that's not been integrated more into the way games are made today. But, um, uh, yeah. Someone's knocking on my door. Give me one sec. Oh, during my segment, you do this. I mean, I'm going to assume because it's it's really difficult to just 
create that much uh, content yeah, but and it, have it be reactive to what you're doing. Yeah, but uh, it's also difficult to create models and to create physics engines and all that stuff. I'm back. Sorry about that. They could have just as easily yep. uh, honed in on that part of Deus Ex rather than just make uh, more beautiful crosshairs every time. But uh, but but I mean, tri AAA games have this this bias towards graphical fidelity. Yeah, and I don't think the developers want to put in so much work into content you might never see. That's true, but uh, I always feel that's such a dumb investment on their behalf. I uh, my favorite yeah, totally. my favorite parts of video games are always when I just discover something. It's kind of out of the way. Everybody has those, you know, let's talk about Dark Souls again, bringing it up, you know, going to the Great Hollow and all that stuff. But, you know, I I don't know. Is there anything to say about Deus Ex that hasn't been said before? I know. I've, I've never played it, actually. Oh. Well, then, that's all I'm going to say for now, because I'm making a video on it. Which will, I don't know if it'll be out when this episode comes out, but... It's online right now. It's just uh, I haven't made it public yet. I also played the Kingsfield 2 and Kingsfield 3. Uh, so Kingsfield 1 and 2 in the uh, non-Japanese releases. And I have way more to say about those games. Okay. So have, you, have either of you... I don't, I, I don't remember if I asked you this when I talked about Kingsfield 1. Have you guys played the Kingsfields? No. Yes. You've played which ones, Daniel? I've only played Kingsfield 2. Okay. Uh, which is technically Kingsfield 3. Yeah, okay. So you played the one which um, begins in the field. Yes. Yeah. Um, I distinctly remember playing it a lot as a kid. Well, I remember I first tried to play it as a kid, and then like I never really got far. And I think I tried uh, a little bit later on, and I got a lot farther. But because I didn't know how the game worked... I'm pretty sure I sold like an important item that you're supposed to hold on to because <laughs> it was worth so much money. And I was like, Oh, now I, I have so much money now I can actually buy like the good stuff. And looking back, you know, I realized I couldn't progress because I sold something I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. I've never experimented. I've never tried that, but I think you can recover those items by talking to certain NPCs. But, uh, yeah, I, I, you probably can, but, like, I was, like, 10. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and I also, and, 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 you know, another thing I, I distinctly remember about the game was, like, it was extremely oppressive. Like, I remember it feeling like a horror game. So that's a, that was another reason why it was tough for me to play, because, you know, I was a little kid, and this game felt like it was dangerous, almost, like, I'm sure if I played it now, it'll you know, it'll look a, little, a bit sillier. But well, I, I, the the atmosphere was very impressive for its time. I I think the atmosphere of that game totally holds up. But uh, okay. before talking about that, Kingsfield two, um, which was Kingsfield one over here. Yeah. So, because uh, we never got the first one. That game. It is such a radical improvement on the first one in so many ways, but it kind of shoots itself in the foot with its world design. So the first one, so? it's just five levels, and each one, you reach the end of one level, you just descend, you go down to the other level. And each level is like an open area where you just, you know, find keys, solve little puzzles, kill these enemies, and then you can descend. And straightforward is enough. Every level is very self-contained. You never need to go up again. Kingsfield 2 is... It's like Dark Souls, where it's this massive sort of interconnected world, and you're retracking the same areas over and over again. And that's very problematic, mm -hmm. because it also looks like shit, like the first Kingsfield did. So you're going to get... You're fighting the visuals more so than you are exploring a lot of the times. But... Uh, once once you get over that, once you finally sort of internalize the layout of the world, it's so good. Uh, it does this thing where you can put down keys into guideposts at save points, and then you can always warp back to that key. 
And that is such a smart way for that game to, uh, because it's, it's, they have a resource based warping system, kind of. And that's such a smart way to go about, uh, creating shortcuts in this world compared to how they handled it in the first one, where you basically just had to walk between all the places until you got the scepter and could warp back to the beginning of each level. Uh, it has these little shuriken looking keys which open almost every door, and those are just items which get depleted. So if you're not careful, you're just going to walk into a door. You know, you're going to open the lock, you're going to walk in, there's nothing in there, you turn around and, oh, you need the key to open it up again. Keys. Oops, you don't have any keys, time to reload your last safe. And there was one moment where I did that, and I was like, fuck. But then I found a secret hidden exit from the prison in one of the cells. That was pretty good. Um, but uh, it's also much darker than the first game. So the first game ends with like, you meet a dragon and a fairy and they like give you the holy moonlight sword. This game you go into like this dark ver d dark part of the dungeon and there are these, all these enemies and fairies from the f first game. They're there in these tubes just floating in water and it's super weird. But um, as for Kingsfield 3, I think that's the Kingsfield that finally like it holds up. It still works. Uh, it looks really good, or maybe it just looks not garbage like the first two. <laughs> uh, it's super, um, super oppressive, like you said, Daniel. And the games are all very self-contained, narrative-wise. So you can probably just pick whichever one up, and it'll mostly make sense. And uh, I look forward to making my videos on those. I'm currently writing the script for Kingsfield 2. Ah, uh, very cool. I'm looking forward to it. I really liked your video on Kingsfield One. So, ah, oh, that's great. So, are you also going to tackle Shadow Tower? I'm gonna do the whole pre Miyazaki FromSoft library that I like. So probably, okay, yeah, probably Shadow Tower. Okay, are you also so you're also gonna tackle the uh, the Japanese ones? Uh maybe. Like I said, if I like them. Because I, I believe there is a Shadow Tower on PS1 that we did get, and there is a PS2 one that we did not get. Uh, uh. But uh, before moving on from Kingsfield, Kingsfield 3, one of the reasons that game works in the ways that the previous ones didn't is because it finally just ditches the dungeon as the de facto setting. Because it's much, it, the areas are much more open in that one, and... It's actually a field. It's actually a field. Uh, you, the maps you have, they're like in the original two games. The maps are just like here's a gray background and here are black lines to designate the map. In Kingsfield Three, it's like it has this brown sort of parchment texture, and it has waypoint markers in it. It's like okay, here's a house. Here's and there's like words written on it, and you're like, oh, finally, they just it makes sense. And it has a pixie map which sort of unlocks as you progress, which is really just a godsend because finally you get to see which areas you haven't gone to yet. So uh, that Kingsfield 3, that's the one which finally holds up. Um, but uh, unless you guys have any questions about Kingsfield, I'd like to move on. How would you feel Ooh. if tomorrow From Software announced Kingsfield five or six or whatever's the next one uh i probably wouldn't care <laughs> no that's not true really? that's not true uh it depends i wouldn't want miyasaki to make it i'd want them to get a uh, what's his name natoshi jin or whoever made those games i'd like for him to return to them because i i i don't know if these games are you know the souls games are very kingsfield but the Kingsfield's games are not very soulsy, if that makes sense. And I wouldn't want to see these okay. games sort of twisted into the Souls formula. I'd, if they make a Kingsfield 5 and they just, you know, take Kingsfield 4 and make a lateral step forwards, just what would this game play like today? I'd probably enjoy it, but 
And you know what? If they did make it, I would buy it. I'm not going to pretend as if I'd ever walk away from it. But uh, it's not a... All right. I, I, I see what you're saying. You want it to retain the spirit of the original and not be influenced by the uh, the Soul series. Yeah. Yeah. I also think... Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this when we talked about Kingsfield 1. Uh, I think they, sh- I think a dungeon crawler VR game, that's something I want to play. Like an Ultima or something just set in a massive dungeon and it's VR. That would be cool. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so then let me ask this then, because you say you don't want it to be like the Souls games. So, what if Kingsfield 5 is like, uh, it, it has bonfires <laughs> and it has Estus? <laughs> Would that be would that be a deal breaker for you? Look, I will buy everything FromSoft makes. So obviously, I'm I'm lying if I said I wouldn't play it. But uh, you'd be disappointed. Yeah, because I feel like there are. It's if you're going back to the King's Fields, there are things those games did with the which the Souls games didn't do that maybe you'd like to hone in on that. Um, that sure. sort of hyper claustrophobia that keeps brought about by the slow turn speed and all that do that stuff but then uh but then i don't know maybe this there's maybe there's a reason they don't make games like this anymore maybe they don't work once the visual fidelity gets cranked up so much i don't know anyway have you ever played uh oh fuck what what are these games called a recent dungeon crawler where you you move as a group of four on a grid. Excuse me? Do you no. know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. You, I totally cannot re- <laughs> re- recall what the name was. Fucking hell. You asked me that question as if I'm a man who plays video games. Well, you <laughs> seem to be into dungeon crawlers. <laughs> uh it's funny. Whenever I play a dungeon crawler, I have such a good time, but I never, lo- I never search them out. Hmm. It's it's weird. But uh, moving away from Kingsfield, I also played the demo for Gloomwood. Now Daniel doesn't know what this is, as I established prior to recording. Vogan, do you know hmm. what this is? I know what this is. Okay. Uh, probably everybody listening knows what this is, so I don't know if you should talk about it. I think the only person who doesn't know what this is is Daniel. I mean, I haven't played the demo. I heard it's good. It's good. I know what Thief is. You know what Thief is? Daniel, do you know what Thief is? Hmm? Yes. <laughs> yes, I know what Thief is. It's made by Looking Glass Studios. Same developers as uh, System Shock and Deus Ex. That's not true. What do you mean that's not System true? Shock 1 was made by Origin and Deus Ex was made by Ion Storm. You're thinking about uh, System Shock 2 and the people who worked oh, on, Shock Ion, on uh, Deus Ex and System Shock. It's all the same yeah, people. Yeah, it's all though. the same people. <laughs> but it's not the same studio, is it? Well, fuck off. <laughs> and I only know that because I was making the Deus Ex video. <laughs> no, uh... It, it's it's like the perfect marriage of Amnesia the Dark Descent and Thief the Dark Project. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but that's how it worked for me. Um, then why didn't they just call it Dark Wood? Uh, what? <laughs> Amnesia the Dark Descent, Thief the Dark Project. Gloom the Dark Wood. <laughs> See, this is why I didn't want to talk about it. I knew Daniel was going <laughs> to... <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it, like I said, per- it's like a perfect marriage of those two games. And it's set in this sort of Victorian city uh, where you have these weird plague doctor dudes. No, no, they're not actually plague doctors. They're more like those turkey-eating pilgrims you always see in like American Thanksgiving movies where they have like, those hats. And... It's, I mean, it's, have you guys played Dishonored? Uh, no. Daniel? I've never played Dishonored. Um, actually, I don't think I've played any games by Arcane Studios. That's a shame. I do own 
Dishonored 1 and 2 on Steam. I just haven't played them yet. Dishonored is the um, franchise which everybody owns the games, but nobody ever plays them. <laughs> um, I think they also made uh, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. I also own that. Uh, I haven't played it yet. <laughs> Uh, I remember the uh, the sword animations for it being really cool. Anyway, uh, Dishonored was sort of... Dishonored was to the original Thief what Bioshock was to System Shock, where they sort of took the original Looking Glass game and they thought, how do we make this palatable to a modern audience? Um, whereas Gloomwood feels like they took Thief and said... How do we, instead of try to change this to make it palatable to a modern audience, they went, how do we, how do we improve on this to, uh, make it palatable to the remaining Thief audience? So it's a lot, it's a lot closer in spirit to Thief the Dark Project than Dishonored was. And, uh, the demo isn't that long. I was able to get maybe 40 minutes or something out of it. Uh, 40 minutes, maybe an hour. I don't, time got away from me, but it was really well done and it was so well directed. There was this one point where I was in the sewers and I heard this noise and I was like, ah, f- damn it, because it has, the game doesn't have, uh, saves coming. So I, I was a few minutes away from my save point and I was like, fuck, something's in the sewers with me. And then I went into this room and I was like, turning all of these valves to open all the doors and there was a window in front of me and I looked past the window and there a monster went running past which was scripted but it was it was so well done the way they uh they sort of threat the encounters and the anticipation and all those other big words to describe a (laughs) well-directed experience I really liked it I implore everybody to uh to download the demo it's on steam right now I don't know sounds too spooky Uh, well Sure. Too spoopy. Download it if you're I'll, I'll if you're not it. a scaredy cat. I'll add it to my wish list. That's very good. I'll check where's the jump.com <laughs> to see where all the jump scares are. What is this? Why do you do this? Why don't you just why don't you change? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to change? Which is yourself. Oh, I'm supposed to not be scared? Yeah. Thanks. I'll try that. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's what I've been doing, guys. Cool. Uh, and Boken, what have you been up to? So I've been playing Valorant, which is a new game by the League of Legends guys. Hmm. Riot Studios. Wait, the and doc doesn't... No, oh, well, anyway... Ah, uh, shut the fuck up. And Valorant is... It's Counter-Strike. It's Counter-Strike with League of Legends heroes. Oh. And, like, it's just Counter-Strike. Is it uh, is it Counter-Strike and something more? Or is it just Counter-Strike? Yes. Have you guys ever played Counter-Strike? I'm assuming Oh, uh, yeah. I played a lot of Counter-Strike nope. when I was a kid. Okay. Like 1.6 yeah. and Source, but... I never played uh, Global yep, Offensive. Never, never played it. Global Offensive it's is just, just a uh, is just a dressed up uh, loot box Skinner box trick pay to win piece of garbage, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's not pay to win. Nah, right? it's just like they have this disgusting predatory skin thing. I mean, yeah, it's Valve. <laughs> Although I'd, I'd have to look at the game because. I mean, I've played Global Offensive mostly when it came out. And I feel like that is a game where you do not want to, to fuck up the visual integrity. Hmm. Like, you, you, it's, it's, a, it's a serious game in tone. Um, and you can't just, you know, equip your, your terrorist dudes with, with a sombrero and mariachis or something. So I don't know how they are really uh, doing skins in that game. Because I always found weapon skins to be really boring. And I'm not sure what else you can do. Mm. And interestingly enough, uh, Valorant also has... It's a free-to-play game. It also has weapon skins, which are apparently really overpriced. Um, 
but there are no skins for the heroes in the game because they are wary of how like you just don't want certain visual indicators to change in a competitive game you want your abilities always to look the same you don't want this hero to suddenly be able to like equip an effect that changes the color of an ability and then you, you see it flying towards you and you have no idea if that is like you don't recognize that color or some other hero has the same ability with a different color and so you don't know what the fuck is coming at you that stuff is not supposed to happen and uh so right now they are keeping that integrity which i feel like you know not sure how they're making money on that but okay and so yeah it's, it's counter strike it's a five versus five tactical shooter you have terrorists and you have counter terrorists and you have bomb sites and the terrorists try to get to one of the bomb sites and plant a bomb and if the bomb goes off the terrorists win and if not then the terrorists lose and uh, the twist is that it's League of Legends heroes, so they have abilities. A bit like Overwatch, but not really. I guess it's kind of like Overwatch, but the fun thing is that you have to also buy the abilities. Like in Encounter Strike, every round you get a certain amount of money, depending on how well you did. And so okay. you need to buy your equipment. Or if you don't die, you, you keep it so you can save your money. But if you use your abilities, you also have to, in the next round, spend so and so much money on buying your abilities back. So real quick, I thought when you, you said like, it's kind of like Overwatch. But what's fun is I thought you were going to say it's not Overwatch. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it doesn't really play like <laughs> Overwatch because it's uh, people die a lot faster. And everyone like it's not like you have this one character who is a crazy melee dude and he can just teleport next to you and punch you in the face no everyone plays with the same guns and the guns are what's most important and the abilities are more like uh side stuff where one can mm. heal and one can throw a smoke bomb and then it's important but it's the aiming is far more important and it's not like someone can just run on the screen and press the ultimate and then everyone around dies so th it's like a nice bonus, but uh, not the main draw. Yeah, the main draw is being able to aim well and do headshots and just do movement. Because in Overwatch, a lot of the uh, maps have one singular goal. Like you're pushing a cart and you need, to, you need the cart to reach the end. Or you have points that you need to capture by standing on them. And in... In Counter-Strike and Valorant, it's, you always have to plant the bomb and the counter-terrorists always have to defend. But there are different, like there are multiple planting spots on every map and multiple entry ways to get there. So hmm. the counter-terrorists have to kind of defend both or all three points and the terrorists can like push and sometimes they can push A or B and then they can rotate and shit. It's a lot more tactical. Okay. And yeah, there's there's no no counter. Like this hero is slow and big and has a lot of health, and this other hero is a sniper, so he counters them. You know that that shit doesn't really happen. But uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. So it's, it's it's fun. It's uh, nice getting into a new competitive game where I'm not that good at it because I'm not that good at shooters. But right now it feels manageable because there aren't that many heroes and not that many maps maps and. I'm just waiting for them to implement ranked play. Oh, that's right. You because like competitive games. I do. And coronavirus and don't ruined like, it. Right now, there are only unranked matches. And I mean, I'm not great at the game, but I have a certain game sense because I'm not an idiot. And I'm playing with a lot of people who do not have a certain game sense <laughs> and are idiots. <laughs> and uh, I do, it, it's... I'm trying really hard to change my mindset where I'm not blaming every, anyone else but me when I lose. Uh, but it's difficult when your teammates are in the defending role and they just, for some reason, keep running in. 
and getting picked off <laughs> even though there's no reason to and it's you know we should stream a video game together book and i think you'll be pleasantly surprised by my game sets <laughs> mm-hmm. it's at that point i just need to focus on myself and go okay i am defending this angle i'm defending this hallway and whenever someone comes i need to win and if i don't it's my fault and everything else is beyond my control and that's what i need to focus to get better so yeah i'm gonna keep playing let's see for how long okay 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 uh so and then also i've played the new animal crossing game now this which, how is it uh animal crossing is a game that i i saw everyone talk about it and talk about the previous games and i even when when it came out and my timeline on Twitter was like three weeks of people talking about Animal Crossing. I had no fucking idea what it was. Like I just couldn't figure out what, what the hell you're even doing in the game or what the point was. M- my um, understanding is that it's okay. just like this accruing debt simulator. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so I've only played the original Animal Crossing on GameCube and... From my recollection, that game was basically all about just, like, living life and, you know, hanging out with all the other little villagers and trying to pay off your debt so that you can, uh, you know, just live in your house, I guess. But, yeah, every, but- like, but every time, at, at least in the original, every time you reached a threshold of the debt that was paid off, Tom Nook would, like, improve your house. So he would, like, add another floor or he would, like, add a basement or so, stuff like that. I don't know how it is in the uh, the new one, though. Yeah, I think that's how it always works. I mean, he okay. he always does the improvement first, and then he tells you how much how high your debt is. <laughs> that dirty but, slum lord. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are those those memes with Tom Nook being a mafioso a boss. <laughs> yeah, like someone who just extorts you for money, and and that's I how mean, the game the starts. The thing is, though. The thing is, though. Uh, he 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 doesn't asks for he doesn't ask for any interest and he's like oh just pay it off whenever you want so he's not that bad ah oh, just like force me to pay this debt that I didn't agree to that's not that bad yeah I mean you you eventually but you you're, you're, you're your buying goal. a house you did agree to it no I but didn't agree to not... him adding stories to my house did I no you did oh. I mean that's the point. That, that is the. Can I the tell him I don't want crossing. those additions to my house? You can. You can. Oh, okay. You can al- also always just not pay off your debt, and then he just won't expand your house any further. Oh. Yeah. But the initial incident is you going onto this island. I mean, at least in the new one, uh, you you get this like, come live on this. A deserted island uh, package and then you fly there and oh we're gonna start a village here and that's how you get there that's how the game starts and then he tells you on the first day well we all set up shop now you have your tent and we're gonna make something out of this and uh, the fee for bringing you here is so and so much money <laughs> and you didn't you didn't agree to that he just invited you onto the island <laughs> And then, then he has you mm. in his claws. Because then you have nothing else to do on the island but pay off your debt. I see. Tom but Nook. but yeah, that's that's the, the funny thing about Animal Crossing is there's no point to this. You just... You can do a- anything, but there's no reason to do anything. And... Uh, sure. It's, it's not... It's not like... You're trying to reach an ending. There's not like an end goal. You're, no. You know, it's it's. It, I, th- I think the point of the game is just to casually just pop in, play around, do fishing, do whatever activities in the game make you feel good, and you know that's it. Well, there are also people who play this pretty religiously, and they decorate the whole island and and spend hours upon hours i saw a twi- like, i saw tweets yes. from people who were like conducting these eugenics experiments to get rid of the ugly villagers <laughs> what oh yeah yeah i remember seeing a, a picture of like uh this is where the ugly people go or something like that and <laughs> 
there's like a police officer in front of him, and and I remember comments going, "The only ugly animal I see there is the pig." Ooh. <laughs> 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 But you don't have to pay off your debt. You don't. I mean, there is an end. There's an end point in the sense that there are credits you can reach. There's also an yeah. end point to expanding your house. But so you don't have in the to original, in the original GameCube one, I did actually pay off the debt. I remember doing that. And if you do it, you uh, get a statue of yourself. So that was pretty. And you need to pay the debt off from that. <laughs> no. No, you just get the uh, statue. It was nice. Uh. I um, reached the yeah. end credits, and uh, it ended with a with a concert of KK Slider. KK Slider, which, which was nice. In your but, DMs, but only after the end credits, I actually unlocked the ability to build roads and pavement, paved ways and shit. Which mm. you know, that's kind of kind of a big part of of a village, but okay. So it only started there, really. Well, I mean, there are some games where the game doesn't truly begin until you reach the credits. And then that's when, like, the actual game starts. I feel like a lot of character action games are like that. Where, like, that first playthrough is more like training for, like, the, you know, the after game. I only ever played Devil May Cry 5 on easy mode, and I only played it once. God, that's pathetic. (laughs) I know. <sighs> but yeah, uh, you just you have to to get your own goals. It's like Minecraft, I believe. You just have to to set your own projects, whether that's filling out uh, 100% of the museum, like catch every bug, catch every fish, get every fossil. Uh, there's a bunch of of tasks you can do for nook miles and nook uh, like miles. get all the fruits onto your island because you you uh i like this tom nook guy he's such a dirty animal <laughs> yeah <laughs> well he's he's very nice because it's a ga- game for little children well he's very and nice no because that's how he gets there, you there are no negative, he can afford to be nice no negative thoughts <laughs> yeah there are no negative thoughts in this island everyone's super nice to you oh uh, it's full time. of whimsy Ugh. Yes. Yes. Ugh. So, so the goal I set for myself was, I got really into into gardening and and growing flowers, because there's a system in the game where you can, you have flowers on your island, and like there are a bunch of base flowers, and then you can crossbreed flowers to create more rare colors. And my goal is, I have this part of my island that I'm just. I'm creating a whole park full of self-grown flowers and shit. And I'm going to fill it with the rarest flowers I can breed. And that's what I'm doing every day. Wait, you can breed flowers? Like new no, kinds of flowers? Breed, no, you can uh, breed new colors. New oh, types. Okay, okay. It's always the same type of flower, but with a new color. I just had a funny thought. An Animal Crossing clone, except everybody is a massive jerk. And it's like a slum, and there are, like, people, your neighbors go in and rob you, and you have to, like, fortify your house against these goblins that just want to steal your shit. And everybody's loud, and they're playing music loud at night, so you you go to sleep at night to recover your energy, and because they were they were partying and you didn't have the balls to go into that party and break it up or call the cops, you, like, wake up and you, like, have a headache. I think that would be a much much I think that would be a great improvement on Animal Crossing. I think that game is called This War of Mine. Is that... No, that doesn't play... That's like a 2D game. I mean, like... It's like... It's exactly like Animal Crossing. It's just jerk edition. I would play okay. that game. And then what are your goals? It's, it's exactly like Animal it Crossing. It doesn't sound like a game where I could breed my flowers. You can breed your flowers, but your neighbors might your neighbor might bring his dog into your yard to take a mean sh- shit. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> and, and the neighbor's kid might pluck your flowers. Great. <laughs> so I am I'm gonna. I think that would be fun. About, what are you talking put a bunch about? Of razor razor fences up so that no one goes into my flower fields. Yeah, and then your neighbors they like start graffitiing your fence. <laughs> 
and the cops are all dirty cops, and they're all on the take. So nobody, so they're not going to help you, and then you just need to get a shotgun. You telling me you wouldn't yeah. play that? I don't know. Animal <laughs> Crossing the of, line. That's kind of frustrating. <laughs> Hey, didn't you want us to play Spec Ops The Line for the podcast? I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we should we should do that. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I know. We'll do that instead of watching Handshakers then. No. Oh. Yes. Yes. But I'm not reneging. We're not reneging on Yu-Gi-Oh. No, if we're reneging on, on handshakers, then you're reneging on... on oh, Yu-Gi-Oh. okay. Well, you then, that's... It's, you, 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 it's, you, can't, you can't just do one and not the other. You know? Wow. It's either, it's either both or neither. I feel like, feel like this is a personal attack, but okay. Maybe you, should, you would be more no. at home at Animal Crossing Jerk Town or whatever it was. Yes. As, as if, if it means I don't have to watch Handshakers, then yes. No, see, Animal Crossing Jerkdown has a neighbor who watches Handshakers really loud. And he's like a he's like a dirty neckbeard. And he keeps listening to, like, waifu anime music. And if you ever go into his house, there's, like, jars of piss and just disgusting. I think that yeah, game... Comes, I think that game would sell... Are you describing house? Boken? Oh. Wow. What a deep... What? Why? Why do you got to put Boken <laughs> down like that? <laughs> and you go into the shop you like the local convenience store and it's just like the usual drunk is in there and everybody is just like blocking every passageway and you need to go past them to get to the food and it's ugh I think that game would win every award that would be the best game ever made I think I don't think I would have but regardless of that i think it's time to take a quick break and then when we come back we'll move on to the essay question hello everyone welcome back It's time for the essay question. This time we're going to be talking about the uh, the PS5 event, but also where it's going to lead into a discussion about transitioning into a new console generation. So less of a specific question and and more of just like a general discussion about the the concept of the, the transition. So. Uh, but before that, how did you guys feel about the PS5 event? Was there was there anything in particular that you know that jumped out at you? You know or, there was. You know any any games? Yeah, well, there's no need to beat around the bush. Uh, Demon Souls remake <laughs> <laughs> was a big yes. one. And uh, is there anything we can really say about it? I mean, everybody's excited. Millions of people are finally going to have the chance to play it for the first time. Uh, it looks terrible. It doesn't look terrible. Uh, nice. Stop. Stop. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of... I mean, I, I get it. But at the same time, I think people are being a, a little ridiculous about how they're acting about it. So, like, I see a lot of people saying that the new remake looks soulless. And uh, I really pretty strongly detest statements like that. Because I feel like, by extension, you're also implying that the developers mm. don't care and mm. that they're, you know, they're just doing it for a paycheck. And I really, I, I do, I, I'm not saying you can't ever say that about a developer, but of all the developers to say that about, I feel like Blue Point you is really misguided because these are people that, like, I've seen interviews with them, and like, they, these are people that really care, like, just. Just based on how they uh, handled the Shadow of the Colossus remake, regardless of whether how you personally feel about how they handled the remake, I thought it was great, but I know some people strongly disagree. They love the look of the original. That's fine. Um, But I don't think you can accuse those people of not caring. They clearly care a lot. They clearly Mm. really give a shit. 
you know i think uh i, I think mean, a lot he- of this animosity to the visuals comes from people Okay, so I don't think that trailer is really that representative of the game's visuals because those are all very stylized shots, like the one where the the uh, the wandering skeleton in uh, the Shrine of Storms. There's a scene you can see him where he's sort of walking towards the camera, and there's like a fi- flame in the background. Uh, I don't know how representative that is of the final game. Because I can then look at the screenshots from the game and it looks completely different. So I think that when they make the trailer, they said, okay, what's going to look cool? What's going to look dynamic? And how can we sort of... Because it was also... This trailer, it was sort of a uh, a recreation of some old Demon Souls trailers. It wasn't a one-to-one, but a lot of it is stuff which was in the first Demon Souls trailers. And I think they were trying to just sort of capture that more than anything else. But uh, I mean, I mean mm. what? Come on! Like pe- millions of people are finally going to be able to play this game, and what? You're just going to crap on it because it doesn't look exactly like you wanted it to look. It was never going to look like that. There's no way to do it. I I feel like. It is valid to an extent to be like, well, the atmosphere of the original was not carried over in the remake, and not liking that is totally fair. But to say that it's by extension a bad thing, I, I also where think I that um, because I I know. don't know how much of that is going to be conveyed with the visuals, though. I think that. Uh, I think that once you start talking about the atmosphere of the game, you're going to have to have played the game to be able to make that call. That's uh, that's fair. Um, I will say, though, like, when you look at the Tower Knight, for example, like, it looks very bright in the trailer. And when you look at the... Go back to the original... It, de- it definitely has, like, a darker, more... It has, like, a great green filter over it. ...feel to it. Mm-hmm. And it, the like, they definitely convey very different uh, feelings. I don't know. I'm gonna have to play it to uh, make that assessment. Sure, but uh, I, again, if you because the the thing is with the Tower Knight, that is a almost shot for shot recreation of the introduction of the of the Tower Knight. So at the very least, you can say like, well, this introduction to the to the to the to this boss fight conveys different things well even 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 then you know if you don't like that i think that's fair but uh, yeah i mean look if uh wherever you land on the visuals if if this is a game breaker good news you can still play the original uh, demon souls it still exists um it yeah it still exists you can go back you can play it It'll, they are not it going does. to delete it, um, but I think the reasons they des- the reason they decided to remake it rather than remaster it, I think it's twofold. I think number one, they wanted to recapture that sort of FromSoft monopoly they got with Bloodborne and Demon Souls originally. So Sony is now the console you buy if you're a FromSoft fan. Uh, I think that was one mm. part. The other part is, and I mentioned this on the chat a few days ago. Namco and Atlas own the distribution rights to Demon Souls outside of Japan. Sony doesn't own it. Sony owns the game, but they don't have the production uh, pub- publishing rights. But if they remake it, well, then they can just uh, get all the money. Do it. Yeah. Do whatever they want with it. Sure. That makes sense. It's kind of a weird workaround, <laughs> but you know. I think uh, I think that's um, you know I think if if. If it weren't for the first reasoning, they probably would have just uh, they probably would have just remastered it and worked out some deal. But uh, you know, I think that's I don't think that was the deciding factor. I think that's just sort of an added uh, caveat. Right. Now, I I do feel for the people that they didn't want something like this. All they wanted was a no frills remaster because for a lot of people. Um, the game is mm, like fine the way it is, but like it does suffer from the fact that it's stuck at 720p and like the 
you know, an inconsistent frame rate. And I think people just wanted to be able to play this game in 1080p or 4K at 60 at a locked 60. And I think that's all that's all that, you know, what a lot of people wanted. And again, totally fair. Sure. And you know, I get that. But uh, I don't think I don't I mean, think you should take that example, out on this game though. Sure. I don't think they should either. You've been you've been Like, for example, Shimigami Tensei Nocturne, for example. I don't think that game needs a remake at all. Like, that game still looks visually very striking, but it's locked on a PS2. All that, all I would really want for that is to, you know, have a clean resolution and, a, you know, consistent frame rate. But if it were to receive oh, yes. a remake, I would not snub my nose at it. I would not you be know, like, pshaw, get to touch of my face. I would be like, Bogan hey, Bogan has cool, been eerily silent throughout this diatribe of ours. Are you not excited for Demon Souls, Bogan? No, I'm not at all excited. Oh my but God. I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> that, that is very considerate of <laughs> you, Yes, Bogan. I know. I, I, I've, so, so please go ahead. I think, Bogan, you're... Uh, your lack of enthusiasm comes from the fact that you've already played this game, yeah? Yes, three times. I think that uh, you can. You're still excited oh, for people enough. who are going to be able to play it for the first time, right? No. Oh. <laughs> 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 Fuck them. No, I. It's who whatever. Cares? I'm, I'm. What bothers me about this is that it has taken up such a huge amount of the presentation. When in my mind it is a, a footnote, it's like okay, you're going to be able to play Demon Souls. Ah, uh, I mean, I think it's like it's it's it has probably the biggest fan following of anything they showed that on uh, in the PlayStation. But event. that is, that is okay. Uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about this, at least on, on my end, is I feel like the the fact that the Demon Souls uh, announcement has been so big is. It just points to a general problem of of backwards compatibility that these consoles don't have. Oh, that's that's true. If I could just yeah. play Demon Souls in some way on my PS5, and it would just be yes, of course you can. It's an old game. We have backwards compatibility. Then this wouldn't be a thing. That but is instead, true. Instead, it's like, oh my god, it's this game I love, and I want to play it again. Oh my god, I'm so excited, you know. And and, and that takes precedent over what I actually want out of a PS5 announcement, which is, hey, look at these all crazy new games we're coming up with. And to be fair, the PS5, the the yeah. event did have some new games. Uh, that's fine. It did. But I don't give a fuck if Demon Souls is coming back. And it's fine if people can play it, but I wish it wouldn't be such a big deal that everyone is just looking to to get things they already know. Mm. I think it's just that people have been wanting this for so long, right? Like, maybe not specifically a remake, but like people love Demon Souls. Like, P Demon Souls has a special place in a lot of people's hearts because it was their first Souls game. So, like, the fact that it's come. While a lot of people just wanted a remaster, uh, I think a lot of people are excited that it's getting a full remake. Like, I think it shows that Sony cares to an extent. <laughs> no, if they cared, these games would just be available on the PS4. I'm not I'm not saying that Sony cares. I'm saying that's the impression well, people that is, uh, It's a bit more complicated than just making it available. Isn't there a big issue with... Uh, with because you kind of have to then either make games you have to future proof them which you know doesn't really work or you need to go back into the games and you need to update them or you need the console to be able to sort of emulate the previous console and then also run the game on that emulation sure look if i can fucking play the settlers 2 which is from 1995 or something on my windows 10 pc and and this the settlers 3 actually settlers 2 was i, I played the uh the the anniversary edition which came out ten ten years later, but Settlers Three I'm just playing right now, which is from 1996 or something, mm -hmm. and it took me a lot of effort to get there to actually get it to play, but it works, 
And if it doesn't work, then usually someone comes up with a mod or something that makes it possible. I can play Planescape Torment and all that shit. I don't even need remastered editions. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, but that that's usually a process that that is specific to each game. The, you're, there's the thing is with the PS3 architecture, it was super weird and oblique. So like as a result, the it's very hard to actually like get it working like i'm pretty sure ps3 emulation even now is still like not perfect as a result of how weird the ps3 architecture was so it's not going to be a simple task for sony to create like either an emulator or the right uh specs for the ps5 so that it flawlessly um emulates every ps3 game and not only emulates them but like boosts the resolution and the frame rate without breaking something in the process uh, sure i mean i'm not saying it's easy but uh i feel like it wouldn't be too much to ask to just bring some kind of demon souls remaster to the ps4 that can't be too much to ask if we can get street fighter 4 on the ps4 and we can get uh, the Last of Us in 60 FPS on the PS4, then why the fuck not Demon Souls? Yeah, so because can they make can make more money if they remake it. Yeah, and Demon Souls would have probably... Well, wouldn't it cost more money to remake it than it would yeah, to remake it? Yeah, but they would have made more money from the remake, because you can sell the yeah. remake at full price. You can't do that with and a you, remaster. You, you waited longer, so people are even more thirsty. Yeah. Anyway, we should uh, we should we should Possibly. wean ourselves off of Demon Souls. It's uh, there's a lot to talk I, about. Yeah, I, feel I like think <laughs> this is not the Demon but Souls. But this is discussion. so emblematic. And what bothers me about the current console generation and the next one is, I feel like they don't they aren't selling me a future. They are just selling me better visuals. Like I don't understand how the new games will improve from the from the old ones. Well, loading loading times are dead now. Whoop de fucking do! That is a yeah, that is a that is a massive deal, man. What are you talking about? You know where loading times have been dead for five years? My PC. No, just absolutely that's, not. That's not true. The uh, that, not true. that Ratchet and Clank I, that Ratchet and Clank trailer they games that's that still Ratchet load. and Clank trailer they showed they were jumping between fully rendered worlds at like ten second spurts. There, your PC can't do that. Maybe if a game no, it just, just absolutely it can't. You don't have the hardware for it. I I do I I reduced loading times by a lot by just getting an SSD. Yeah, you you will be able to do it when you get that SSD. But I do have an SSD already. Yeah, you pr it's probably not as good as the new consoles have. Sure, then I'll get it in two years. Yeah, you'll get it. I'm saying th this is definitely a future. Like, there's nothing the, the games that are going to be made are going to be made knowing that you never you never really need to worry that much about loading times that's going to massively change how these games are designed okay sure but uh veering back a bit God, godfall looked all right <laughs> what what look godfall looked yeah. all right <laughs> God, it, it looked so so monotonous. I don't even know. It it. I mean, are you fighting bots? Are you fighting other people? I had no idea. Well, no, it looked like a God of War type of it's, thing. I'm I'm no. It looked like a smite kind of thing to me. Yeah, there were like three people on the screen at most at any time. No, I don't think that's true. It looked it looked to me like it was a. No, you're fighting monsters. Are and these stuff. did a, did we get any launch now. dates for these trailers? No, because I don't think that's so. the thing, though. No, not really. We don't we don't even know yeah. when the PS5 yeah, it's is coming, coming out, out in the holiday how much season. It costs. That's a... okay. So no, I'm lo I'm looking at Godfall's trailer right now. I think you guys are thinking of a different game because this looks very much like a God of War, Devil May Cry ish type of thing where you get like over-the-top weapons and you're fighting like a bunch of different monsters um i'm wondering if these games are going to be available at launch that would be the first time since the playstation one that sony had good games or well had us had a selection of games from the get-go 
Remember when the PlayStation if those were launch games that those trailers would have said launch game. Remember when the PlayStation Four came and we were like we had Knack and Killzone, and then a year passed and we got like Infamous <laughs> Second Son, and then like another year passed and it's like okay here's Bloodborne, and here's Uncharted, and it's like ah oh, okay finally finally something is on this platform. Because it took like two years for the uh, for the console exclusives, or, well, the seventh gen exclusives to really crop up. That's probably going to happen again, isn't it? Probably, but uh, I I really don't want to go through that again. I mean, just just have the games ready at launch. Sony has like fifty studios or whatever. <laughs> just have the games ready. What is this? I'll play Ratchet and Clank at launch. You crazy? I'll play uh, yeah, sh- Demon Souls again. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played Demon Souls since it first came out, and I actually played Demon Souls before most people. Oh my did god! What a what a what a I bragging died. ride here! <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I played it before it was cool, because uh, I was. It's defunct now, but I was uh, working for a game website at the time, and I was able to get a, a press copy before anyone else did. So I was I was playing it months before it. Uh, well, it was you know, out. Daniel, I've played the Kingsfield games, so if we're if we're if we're comparing bragging rights here, no, but I wonder. Um... I do wonder this this has got to be the last time people are going to tolerate non backwards compatibility, right? Surely. Uh the way things are going, well, people cream their pants when they hear the word remake. Yeah, but Xbox has like this they've been ha- starting this initiative to make their games, the old games compatible with a new platform. It's 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 time. It's time that people are just able to keep playing these games, right? I mean, we agree well, with that, but... Uh, <laughs> it's it's going to depend on how well the Xbox is doing. Actually, can can you explain to me how that system in the Xbox works? Because I'm still still not sure about it. Well, they go back into the old games and they, uh, they, tweak, their, they tweak them to make them playable, I think. And they just... But do the, do the new games also have to work on the old consoles? No, 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 you can't port an Xbox One game to an Xbox 360 without just breaking it. No, no, but I mean the Series X games to... No, what is the new one called? The Xbox Series One X, Series right? X, yes. Yeah, to an Xbox One X. Holy fuck, these names are terrible. Ah, uh, no, probably not. I wouldn't assume so either, but I saw a bunch of people talk about that, like they're going to be shackled to the old systems with this smart delivery thing. Uh, I and it's a, I that doubt it. Then why would they be making a new console? Because they have to. <laughs> They're obligated. <laughs> it's like shit. It's that time. Yeah, it's just, just we just got to make another one. Is there any energy for the Xbox? What does the Xbox do better, or at all? Halo, Gears of War. I don't know. No, but I mean technically. Oh, well, it's more powerful, the... but the what the the Xbox X, One Series X, X. Sp- the series. I mean, we don't we don't even know if the Series X. Yeah, is more yeah powerful. they uh, I think they, they, do. they came out with the specs a few days ago. the The Xbox is more powerful, but so what? So wait, like, great! I c- by how much? Like, is it is this like a huge difference? I I can't imagine yeah, it's, it's like, like a big. Difference. It's I think it's a bit more powerful in almost every regard, but it's like it's like zero point zero one percent extra teraflops or whatever. It's like it's very. Mu- I think it's a bit more, but <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit more, but it's better. It's nothing that's like it's still a. They're they're both going to be rendering these to. Uh, to a 4K television, neither one is really going to have load times. It's not going to matter. And also, what is yeah, what is like that extra? The di- like the difference is that extra be power so, is there, so I can play so what? What am I playing there? 
to, to me, this sounds like this sounds like the difference between like, oh yeah, technically the PS3 was more powerful than the 360. But who cares? All the games are yeah. still going to look the same. See, but the thing is, that's what it sounds the thing like. Is to if me. the PlayStation 5 was more powerful than the Xbox Series X, then, then the yeah. PlayStation <laughs> fanboys wouldn't shut the fuck up. They about did it. remember with the PlayStation 4 when they said that very same thing, and then the yeah. Xbox <laughs> fans they were like. Well, statistically speaking, the most powerful console has never won a console generation, which was true until the PlayStation 4 came out. But it's it still remains true. There's no correlation between a console's power and its and its staying power. It's just what what do you have to offer? Yeah, look at the Nintendo Switch. Arguably it's the weakest and it's the most successful. When the PS3 360 and the Wii came out, the Wii even though the the games were of questionable quality, no, was the, the, the best PlayStation Four is more successful than the Switch. Yeah, but the Switch is still massively the Switch successful. Hasn't been out as and long. The, not only that, not only that, but the PS Four had a it had a huge advantage in terms of when it came out. The Switch came out much later. Yeah, because but of the Wii that U. doesn't matter. We're still talking about units sold. Like the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, did the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty outsell the PlayStation Three in the end? For a for a long while, the 360 was ahead of the PS3, but by the end of the console generation, the the PS3 ended oh, up selling more. Oh, there you go. More. But uh, that that console came out a year earlier. I don't think I don't think it matters uh, the advantage, because when the Switch outsells the PlayStation 4, then it will have won that generation. But I wonder, I wonder if. Uh, is, are they going to keep the Switch throughout this generation too, or are they going to upgrade immediately? See, that's see, that's what I'm think. That's what has me concerned. What is Nintendo going to do? Are they going to do a, a Nintendo Switch Part Two? Are they going to do something completely different? I think it would be a massive, uh, like fuck up if they don't do just Switch Part Two and it's backwards compatible with the, the the original Switch, and it's just a more powerful version, because I think that's just what yeah. people want. But at the same time, that seems very un-Nintendo. <laughs> like, Nintendo don't want to do the obvious thing. They want to do something new and fresh. They don't want to compete. They want to exist as their own sort of they wanna con- entity. Like, they, I remember Miyamoto was saying shit like, oh, I want to come up with something better than buttons. <laughs> And it's like, no, people like buttons. I hate to break it to you. I like you, Miyamoto, but please so, sit down, Grandpa. <laughs> Nobody likes motion yeah, like, controls. I, 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 I appreciate, I appreciate the enthusiasm. I appreciate the ingenuity, and I, you know that you want to do something new and different. But even he conceded that, like, yeah, I want to do something better than buttons. But right now, <laughs> buttons are the best thing. So, <laughs> so it, yeah, I think the smart thing to do would be. Switch Part 2, bigger, better, stronger, and it's backwards compatible with the original Switch. Is Nintendo going to do that? I don't know. Because it's they are, they're probably going to want to do a controller that you control with your butt cheeks <laughs> or something. Like That's just how they are. Ah, uh, a butt joke. Yeah. Yes, in, in order for you to like aim the bow, you have to like fart in the controller. Uh, if... If like Xbox whatever. flops this generation, the next generation, like they did this time, it didn't flop, really. But if if it's not a home run for them, do you think they're just going to stop with the Xbox? And they'll just be like, oh, I think it's they just should. like, we'll I think just they like should. make games on the PC. And I mean, if the Xbox makes money, I guess they'll keep doing it. But they already but they kind already of don't... doing that? Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, I, just cu- stop producing the Xbox and just have their studios make PC games. And then... Yeah, I don't even understand why they are... I guess they, it, it has to be making money if they're still sticking well, out. It's it, Microsoft. Like, they have a lot of know. money. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure, they do. But I don't know. It just seems weird to me that they, they've... They've stuck with it this whole time. And they're still going. So... More power to him, I guess, but, like, to me, the Xbox One, like, it had nothing of value. Like, I saw absolutely no reason to own an Xbox no. One. You didn't want to play period. Rise, Son of Rome? You could get that on PC. No. Not in the beginning, though. Oh. 
Yeah, maybe not in the beginning, but Actually, it's there not now. not for a long time, I think. But that's the point is uh, Microsoft has been pivoting towards having those games on the PC too. What are the games that I can get on an Xbox that I can't get on my PC right now or at the launch of the new Xbox Series X? Mm-hmm. I think that's a smart I think that is a smart business model where like people were there was this rumor that Bloodburn was going to come to the PC which I still believe to be true. You know when when you've had your exclusive for like 7 years or 5 years or whatever just just put it on PC too man. It's like you can charge full price for yeah. a game you've already made again. Yeah. And like it's still going to so, I mean so Horizon Horizon Zero Dawn was ported to PC. So why not? Why yeah. not Bloodborne? Uh, Heavy why Rain well? was ported, and I think hu- Detroit become human. So maybe David Cage, we owe him an apology. He's been a visionary on this front. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I watched a Let's Play of uh, of Heavy Rain not too long ago to like refresh myself, and that, that Heavy Rain was actually worse than <laughs> it I is. It, it was also worse like, than I remember. I was I shocked remembered. by how yes, bad it me was. Too. <laughs> and then then like, I went to Indigo <laughs> Prophecy, and I was shocked how bad that is <laughs> but you no know, here's the thing though heavy rain is like is just bad but indigo prophecy is hilariously <laughs> bad like it is bad in ways that make it infinitely can more i tell you guys something about uh indigo prophecy that's the game that made me realize that video games could be art i shit you not i was no i don't i'm not even gonna make fun of you for that because like if you played it at the time, like because I because we see were that. me and my uncle, we were uh, we were pretty young playing it, and it was like you can do different things, and different things will happen. Whereas before, we'd only played like Ratchet and Clank and stuff, but it was like, oh my god, the potential of video games, and it was like fucking David Cage game, and I am so ashamed of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no, I don't think there's a reason to feel ashamed. Like so I, I still have a lot of uh, friends uh, who loved indigo prophecy because they probably just played the first three hours and they were really impressed by it oh no we finished it we finished it oh my god really (laughs) you didn't go what the hell at the end no we were like what could it what does that mean what what does it mean (laughs) that that must have some meaning to it when there's a a death cult with false powers and that old woman with the birds was didn't the main character get his powers because his mother, when she was pregnant with him, got too close to radiation? <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking superhero or something? I don't remember. Hey, you guys continue to riff for a few minutes. I'm going to check something out. I'll be back in very quickly. Oh, he's going to check yeah, something that... out. I think he's going to get to his fucking chicken. <laughs> his fucking chicken. He doesn't want his uh, egg fiasco to occur again, yeah. where uh, his apartment smells like eggs. Who the hell weeks. goes in the break to his kitchen and starts cooking while there's still half a podcast to to record? The I know fuck is it's, wrong with it's ridiculous. I, tr- truly, we we have made a critical error by having Acer on the podcast. I we, I, we we should have picked someone else, but. I, I suppose we just have to live with it. Well, it's not too late. We can spitball ideas. No, and, I think it is too late. Use as a replacement. Well, well post mesmeric, Alex, he was pretty yeah. cool. He was a good a dude. Idea. Good dude. Um, at most, he's a good dude. Maybe someone with a really big channel. Mm. Yeah, maybe we can get. Uh, Pat from uh, Super Best Friends. <laughs> oh, you don't another want him podcaster. on your podcast. Oh, no, I would oh, love to no, have him no, on no. the podcast. He's, he would just shit everything up. Oh, it would God. be glorious. He, he's the kind of guy who is not only stubborn, but he will not stop defending his dumbest points until you're just tired of it. I know. It would be he incredible. He has so much energy on his Twitter just talking to random idiots. I don't get it. He he has that that uh, I don't want to I don't think it's big dick energy but it it's it's a form of energy. Yeah, he has too much. It's free time, maybe I don't know. 
Like well, when, when I yeah. get onto some uh, really hot take on my Twitter <laughs> and I have someone reply to me and then I reply back and then they keep going after three replies, I'm like, oh, fuck, I made a huge mistake. <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly. I only got to the feel. last half of that. What are we talking about? Nothing. Uh, t- dumb Twitter back and forths. We're also thinking of replacing you with another what? co-host. What is this? How's your chicken? How did you know I was making chicken? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, what the fuck? <laughs> it's fine. It's in front of me. Can I tell you guys something? I have this... Uh, I know about this guy... I was gonna lie to you and say I don't know him. He's he's a he's a relative of mine. He's my uncle, not the uncle I played Indigo Privacy with. This is another uncle. This uncle is a dirty animal. Okay. Let me tell you. You know how you can get like honey glazed ham. You know how you can get like honey glazed yes. ham. You just didn't answer immediately. This is the kind of guy. This is the sort of dirty animals my family has. He'll put like the tray. He'll like put it on a grill, and there's like a tray which collects the fat. He will. When he's when he's done cooking it, he'll like put the fat. He'll he'll use it like a sauce on his ham, and then when he's done eating it, his dish will just be soaked in in uh, ham fat, and he'll just slurp that up like a filthy dog or something. It's disgusting, and that's what? why that's why I do not go to family reunions. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah, just what is this? I'm supposed to believe this is a grown person? <laughs> I'm supposed to take this person seriously? Get out of here. <laughs> if you want a recommendation, I can. Uh, do you know Dan Reichert? I do not. Really? You don't know Dan Reichert? Asa, do you know Dan Reichert? Ah, pfft, of course. But uh, explain it to Daniel. <laughs> well, he's he's a guy who was on the giant on, on Giant Bomb. He he quit uh, recently. See, I don't listen to Giant yeah. Bomb. It's just if you ever want to just feel your blood boil, just look up videos where he discusses just about anything that has to do with uh, with not video games. What well, what it's is just, it? Well, and just his his daily stories about how he's living and what he's eating and how he doesn't grasp the most basic concepts of of existence. <laughs> it's like there the he he tells those stories just like he was making an omelet and he he heard from his mother that getting like cooking the egg whites that's the most important part and so he he broke a bunch of eggs and then he threw the actual shells into the pan because the shells <laughs> were white <sighs> and then he, he tried cooking the shells and called his mother like these don't look edible what am i doing wrong what kind of fucking animal is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so <laughs> have you guys have you guys uh, what the fuck? have you guys kept up with adam sessler no not like if you go all. to his Twitter page, it's really sad. He's like lost his mind. He's like picking fights with everybody. Surprised. He's like, he's like a fifty-year-old man who does this sort of gross-out humor for children, and he does like the shittiest takes of everything. And people are commenting like, "Hey, man, is everything okay? This isn't, you know, this isn't. You shouldn't be acting like this." And his comments, his his threats are like. Well, I'm a famous person and you're just a fucking garbage person on Twitter. So who's really crazy here? It's just like, dude, what the hell happened? <laughs> so, yeah. Fun times. So, yeah. I wanted to bring this up because I thought it was interesting. So, I felt like... With every console generation, except for the current one that we're in and the one that we're going to be transitioning into, that it felt like every generation was like a big leap. If you look at PS1 to PS2, big, big, huge mm-hmm. leap. If you look at PS, if you look at PS2 to PS3, big, huge leap. But if you look at PS3 to PS4, not as big of a leap. 
it's still noticeable. You can still look at it. It's all right. PS4 games look more detailed. They look cleaner. You know, frame rates are more consistent. But it feels like a half yeah, step. Yeah, yeah. Where are you, where are you going with this? Where are you going space, with this? Well, you know, I feel the same way with how I see these PS5 games. You don't buy the graphical updates. I, I, I don't think I don't think the the graphical update from PS4 to PS5 does not feel as significant compared to PS1 to PS2 or PS2 to PS3. Mm. I mean, I feel like when they I, revealed that Unreal Engine uh, tech demo, that looked very impressive. But at the same time, I just don't care because at this point we are at a graphical fidelity where I feel like everything is possible. And everything has been possible for a while. Yeah, I mean, so what? What the fuck do I care if the shadows look more realistic? We have a. Or you can you can render more pebbles that are falling from the wall when I'm stepping next to it. Like, I, what, why? Whatever. We have we have. A, it's been a while since we reached the graphical point, graphical fidelity point that you could like. The moment you were, we were able to just render individual shampoo bottles in an apartment, that's it. You can't like. W- w- what else is there really to render? Like, how much more power do we need? And it doesn't always... Because tr- shampoo bottles, the golden nah, standard. You, you know what I mean. It's just like, you can see something <laughs> as small as that and still notice that it what it is. Like, w- what else? What What is going to be done? Um, and to what end? And to what end? How does it relate? Like, how does this threat back into the game? I'm interested in ray tracing... I think that's going. I I uh, I think that may be the game changer here. But how does ray tracing translate to better gameplay? No, I I'm, I mean does. in terms of visuals, and yeah, sure. In terms of visuals, ray tracing looks really cool and interesting. But uh, I, again, like I feel like if we had jumped from PS3 to PS5, for example. Uh, I think the jump would look would be way more impressive. Mm. I feel like, and, and you know that kind of, that's going back to what I was saying before. Where at this point it feels like diminishing returns, where uh, every console leap, it's it's it doesn't feel as mind blowing. Mm. Like even even the jump from PS2 to PS3. I don't think was quite as significant as the jump from PS1 to PS2, even though it's still it's still really significant. I wonder if the uh, SSD speed is going to change our minds, and we won't really know until we get our hands on the consoles. That that and ray tracing, maybe. maybe. But maybe, maybe. I mean, I did not see anything on the Sony states, with the exception of Ratchet and Clank. Maybe, but um. I didn't really see anything there that I thought, wow, that's like, a fo- I will ba- pay four or five or six hundred dollars or whatever it was, because this could not have been done on the PlayStation 4. The new Ratchet game does yeah. look great. Uh, I mean, I'm not looking forward to the writing, because the writing in Ratchet and Clank games for a long time now have been pretty mm-hmm. bad. But the games have all been consistently fun to play. With the, uh, and, down now. Like, well, with the, okay, with the exception of some of the weird spinoffs, like... All for one, uh, Quest for, for one Booty, it's just like, ugh. Yeah, the, well, Quest for Booty was kind of whatever, yeah. but... Uh, but, yeah, the point is, this new Ratchet game, it looks a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to playing it. And, yeah, I uh, sure... If it's, you know, ray tracing, SSD, non-loading, whatever. All that's great. All that's cool. Do you remember last console generation? The buzzword was subsurface scattering. I don't remember this. <laughs> but it does sound like something they would peddle. And, uh, no, that was that was the sixth gen. No, that was the seventh. Then they talked about uh, immersion. They really hampered that home and, like, an experience and uh now they're all about mm, 
I think I think that was I think that was more so like yeah the PS3 360 they were trying to be like oh we got to make you feel immersed that's I think that's when they started to to try and hammer that home and then the PS4 was like all in it's like all that, that's like the that was like the main mm-hmm. focus but um yeah I, s- I saw people go uh when they showed Horizon Zero Dawn 2. Oh, is this the, the best looking game of all time? <laughs> even though it was a cutscene? <laughs> like there, there wasn't a second of gameplay. And even then, it's like, this is not... Uh, it's so... Not the the, the, the Horizon Zero ever. Dawn announcement was for me like... They didn't even bother showing any gameplay whatsoever because everyone knows what the fuck that game is going to be. It's the original sold of... 12 million copies. It made over half a billion dollars. <laughs> oh god. Mm-hmm. Uh I you know I beat I beat a Horizon Zero Dawn and I it was a beautiful game. Like say what you will about it, it was an absolutely astonishing looking game. I, it, it's great looking. But the game itself while it was not a bad game, I didn't think it was anything special. Um, I didn't really think it was all that fun to play. I really hope this is the generation where people sort of get sick of the visuals. I, I noticed it starting. I remember when Red Dead 2 came out, a lot of people went like, it is so visually detailed, and man, I fucking hate it. And now I'm reading rem- uh, interviews about The Last of Us 2, where it's like, the game... When you're when you're doing when you're performing certain actions, like the veins of the characters will pop out if they're stressed, and it's like to what end? To Why? what end is this and, being and done? We... This could have been this. This is wasted man hour. Nobody's gonna notice this, and nobody would care if you cut it. Like this is. And then put that put that into yeah. the context of all these reports about crunch time, mm-hmm. never ending crunch time at Naughty Dog. Imagine if instead of doing that shit, they yeah. would just have that animation team working on, I don't know, another video game? You know, it's its funny because, like, yeah, we, we have all these games where the graphical fidelity is is amplified to such an extent where all these little details are being implemented. And it, 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 it's so minute that it doesn't r- really add anything. Mm-hmm. And yet all I can think about is... I go back to a game like Okami, and that to me is still one of the most beautiful games I've ever seen. And that's a PS2 game, and it didn't it didn't get uh, it didn't become a beautiful game by you know adding veins to like a horse's nutsack. <laughs> it, it did it by it did it by uh, like having a very strong visual aesthetic. Yeah. Oh. And if you look at the beta of Okami, it had a more traditional look to it and it looks super generic and i'm so glad that hideki kamiya you know made the call and be like nah this is this isn't good enough and change it to the watercolor art style because now it looks super memorable and it's a it's a fantastic looking game and it, it's one that sticks in my memory to this day yeah, it's the, so, the presentation yeah. and just the overall package is so much more important than the the visual fidelity of it all and that's I mean, not to say... Uh, go on, sorry. Wind Waker, for example, still such a great example of of just art style and music and everything working together. Or just recently, the, uh, earlier today, I looked at Persona 5 again. And it's like you look at those, at, at those uh, menus and the music. Oh, so good. Five years into the future of every other fucking game series. That shit is so much better than, than what is coming out these days. Like, it, it is fucking stunning how good those menus work and how stylish they are arranged around the, 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 the battle menus and all that. Yeah, everything has a sense of personality yeah. to it. Everything, like, it looks so unique and distinct. And and yet, at the same time, even though... it. It, 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 you might think it would look too cluttered or busy. They managed to do it in a way where there's a sense of clarity to it. That's that's insane. Yeah. Uh, and this is not to say like there is a you know there is a time and place for games to just be incredibly beautiful. Um, 
I yeah, think this that is not uh, a condemnation th- of. I, uh, yeah, to be clear, we're not condemning. Games I think that uh, like I will Last probably Us, you know that I will probably realistic. never touch the original Shadow of the Colossus again. In the light of my, you know, I have the remaster. They play like ninety nine percent the same. It is basically the same game, except it's prettier. Like, I'm sorry if this makes me not a purist. I'm going to play the remaster. And I'll probably do the same with Demon's Souls, unless there's some massive massive changes to the gameplay. But, you know, this has to be the point where these visuals just plateau. Right? We cannot keep justifying these console purchases on the promise of, we'll just, you know, we make the veins pop, or we're going to model each individual strain of hair on the on the horse's balls or whatever this 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 has to be it yeah i hope so i i mean also just in terms of the business there is no way you can keep justifying this i played i talked about gloomwood earlier that game looks like thief it has well it's a bit more beautiful than thief but that is like that's a that's a that's an art style and that's that's the most beautiful game I've played in 2020. Compare that to I, I, I go again to uh, The Last of Us Two. There's nothing about that which I think is like nothing about The Last of Us Two which I'm excited for has anything to do with the gameplay you know, with the visuals. It has to do with I kind of like the first one. I'll probably check this out at when it goes on sale because I like the characters. I like the story and some of the mechanics were fun, but Man, just, I, I could, I don't care. I don't care about these visuals. I like them. Honestly, I like that they're there, but I could, you know. You know, you know it also makes me think, like, what the hell are they going to do for the PS6? Mm-hmm. What the hell are they going to do for the Xbox uh, 1080,000, whatever the hell they're going to call that thing? Like, what? Where where do we go from here? 8K. Yeah, I guess 8K, I suppose, but like, I don't At know. At some point we really have to matter? get into streaming, don't we? Uh, do we have to? I feel like both Sony and uh, the Xbox Series X were supposed to have these streaming cloud solutions. Oh, that's in. right. Sony had that. And they, they bought Gaikai. They they didn't talk about that at all. Maybe because of how poorly the Stadia has been doing. <laughs> but yeah, that wasn't part of the presentation at all. Yeah, that's also another thing with streaming. There, a box under the television has its place and it has its benefits. But if we're just talking about visual juggernauts here, the Stadia has everybody beat because theoretically it could render everything. So if that's the way we're going to keep marketing these consoles, eventually it'll just be Google. Well, the Stadia is, is a current massive failure. So yeah, I'm, I, not, I, I, don't I, think, I mean, in, at least currently speaking, it's not. I don't think it'll be anywhere. Google. I don't think it'll be Stadia. But I mean, eventually people are going to realize, like, we're going to be that well connected internet wise that a sizable enough chunk of the population is just going to say, why do I need this plastic box when I can just buy a Stadia subscription? Like, the the PlayStation 5, there is a version without a Blu-ray drive. That The yeah. writing is on the wall. Blu-ray is going to be out soon. The disc component is going to be out soon. Probably next-gen. I think at some point, I think at some point, consoles are going to be phased out completely. I think it's going to get to the point where... Streaming service? You're... It's it's just going to be uh, a monitor, and it's going to be your TV or whatever, and it's and that it's going to have everything in it, and it's going to be so powerful that like you're not going to need to uh, have a box. You could just have a controller that connects to the TV, and the TV is just so sh- powerful that like it's basically your new computer. That's yeah, entirely possible. And that because TV. That's that's t that's the direction TVs have been going in in a while now. Like I have a a Sony Android TV that I can connect a, a controller to, and it has access to like the Google Play Store. So like, you know, obviously it's not powerful enough to play something that looks like 
uh, the Ratchet and Clank game or anything like that. But that seems to be the direction that eventually when technology is powerful enough, like it, that seems to be what we're gonna, what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> hey, do you guys were ever going to get Elden Ring? We haven't gotten a trailer in over a year now. What's going on there? Is Miyazaki dead? Uh, Is George R.R. R. Martin delaying the production like he does his books? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Never. You know, I don't my know. life doesn't revolve around FromSoft games. Well, what a poor man well. you are. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm just waiting for the new benchmark game that changes what the big games are. I'm just so fucking tired of it. Oh, you mean like the new Dark Souls or something like that? Yes, or the new Undertale or Uh, the new Witcher 3. Look at at you. Look at you, you you, you old jaded (laughs) gamer, you. Dude, when they revealed Ghost of Tsushima, I wanted to fucking hang myself. (laughs) It's just like all the boxes ticked. Open world, crafting... Play however the fuck you want. Oh, it looks so good. Fucking <laughs> checklist gaming all the way through. And it, oh, it just... Uh, no, so I mean, bad. I, I'm semi looking forward to that game, but only if the combat is not fucking Assassin's Creed. And I saw some gameplay and I'm like, oh God, this looks like it Assassin's It looks like Creed. Assassin's Creed. And then also, well, of course, you can also stealth everything... So it has to adapt to how you want to play. And no, I don't want to choose how I play. You're the fucking game designer. Just give me a tool the, set the and thi- make me play. Fuck. The thing is, though, I have been waiting for like a really good samurai game. I want a good ass samurai game and not one with over the top powers or anything stupid like that. I, or, or even Way of the Samurai is still a little silly. You didn't like Sakura? And- I, I I want something gritty and okay. grounded. That's what I'm saying. I want some I want something that like is realistic, like that makes you really actually feel like a samurai. And that's why I was looking forward to Ghost of Tsushima. I was hoping like, is this the game? And doesn't really seem that way. I I guess I have to keep waiting. I also uh I also hate how these companies they make billions of dollars. You can't put one percent of your earnings into like niche stuff. Bethesda makes hundreds of millions of dollars on these disgusting video games they make. You can't put like one million dollars into like a little little team to put together an isometric Fallout game for the diehard fans. You can't do a little two D role playing no. Elder Scrolls game. Like it does does everything does get... everything have to be this just this disgusting predatory pricing piece of crap? I'm sorry, you're never gonna get Van Buren. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> Uh, no, but that's just an that example. I, I don't. I'm not really a fan <laughs> of any of the uh, the Bethesda games. But like with Sony or, or Xbox or even Nintendo now, like what's why not take one percent, literally one percent of the money you're making, and put it in the hand of like an ambitious person with a vision. And if it doesn't make its money, that's okay. It's not an investment in like you don't expect to make that money back. You expect to. Breed new talent, which are going to keep the industry alive. You can't do that. We gotta, we gotta keep these fuck these third person sneak or action, and it's an open world, and but, but uh, it's just cinematic. And look at these visuals. You gotta keep doing that. Yeah, everything yep. has to be this giant hit, Ugh. and it, yep. it's, it's just like with movies, where everything has to start a big, huge. Uh, universe now everything needs to be connected nothing can really end <laughs> nothing nobody's ever really gone Boken. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever really gone uh, what we need uh, yeah, is a it's... is a brand of cultural conservatism i tells you <laughs> embedded within these companies i don't know all right, I think uh, I think that's about <laughs> it. I know I don't know what conclusion we've really come to, but that was certainly a discussion. Yeah, I um, I don't like just briefly going back. 
Majora's okay. Mask. Could you could Nintendo just stop and make another Majora's Mask? Why not? Why can't what? they just do that again? I mean Okay, wait. You can't really criticize Nintendo for not trying to be bold and different with Zelda because they already did that with Breath of the Wild. Regardless of how you personally feel about Breath of the Wild, you can't say that they didn't try something different. No, see, different I, I can because they just transformed Zelda into the exact same game as all the other studios are making. Careful now. <laughs> It's not a bold new vision. That it's not. So, it's not. That is even, so fucking untrue. <laughs> okay, even as even as someone that thinks Breath of the Wild is not God's gift to gaming, as like a lot of people do, even I have to object to that. Now, That's I, not I think true. it is very true. I mean, what unique element did Breath of the Wild offer to its niche? Uh, the climbing. Oh uh, yeah, we've never seen towers. climbing in video games. We've no, never seen we those never towers seen... before. Those towers are literally brought over from the Assassin's Creed. Like this yes, is what Ubisoft Acer. does this in Acer, every one nature. of their games. No, 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 no. The towers Look, are, no, are presented in a way where there is no checkpoint gaming, where you can actually like the map is designed in a way where you can actually see everything with your own eyes and then make your way over there while you just put down waypoint markers yourself and you actually explore and also the climbing we have never seen climbing like that before where you can actually climb every fucking thing in the game you know that that whole skyrim promise of see that mountain you can climb it that was made true in breath of the wild and not before and that is what what is yeah, so fucking enjoyable about i was, I was gonna say i was gonna say the nature of the climbing in breath of the wild was extremely unique and innovative. Okay. Even if it was technically broken because you can circumvent it with stamina potions, regardless of that, it is still its okay, own thing. But it's, no one else has done okay, that. Okay, you scale to, to exploration in you're, itself. I, you're, not, you're not really addressing the point I made, though. I, I made a bit of a hyperbolic statement. My point is not... I should probably not have said that it doesn't do anything new. It, it does. My point is, Breath of the Wild is no Majora's Mask. It's this... How it's it's too tuned to what does the general consumer want? They want open world. Okay, we'll do open world. They like they like crafting. Uh, we can do this sort of cooking game. They like they like this. They like this. They just a mix and match of everything. It's that's not Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask was not made for like a general audience. Okay, I, I'm starting to get. Yeah, what you're I, I probably uh, I put what it you... poorly the first time. Okay, what you're, what you're saying is, yeah, that Majora's Mask was more specifically a game that was uh, made to be its own uh, pure artistic vision yeah. and was its own unique experience. And that's that's why that's what opposed, that's you know. why I also brought up the topics of the Bethesda games, where the Fallout's of today are not made for the people who played Fallout when this was a new franchise. Like whatever you think, maybe New Vegas, maybe, but that's a ten-year-old game. Almost, you know, Morrowind and Skyrim do not belong to the same franchise. Like, these games are not made for the same people. And uh, this is a point I keep harping on about whenever we talk about this stuff. <laughs> but you can't, you can't put together like a little money to just have a team do something innovative. I mean, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, I think they should. They, they and and, and Sony Sony is the worst culprit here, I think, because every new franchise out of Sony's factory, it's the same. It's like Last of Us, except it's Samurais. Last of Us, except it's post-apocalyptic with robots. Last of Us, except it's God of War now. It's you can't yeah. you can't just abandon that formula. I know these games sell millions of copies, but you can't do something different. You can't. No, I hear you, but at the same time, you can't really blame them because they're making a shit ton of money. I'm not. Yeah, yeah you know what? Keep making them, but could you I'm, also I'm make something to, else? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not saying you have to like it, but like you know, there there is a big on. market for them. I'm being very dismissive to a really big audience of gamers, but surely even the people who like those games could say, "Well, it's kind of unfair that this is all they're making now." And, you know, on the other hand, at least Xbox, while it might look like an invasion, they did buy a bunch of uh, smaller studios and they are 
I hope Team Ninja. enabling those. No, studios, not Team Ninja. Ninja Theory. Yeah, and I hope they are enabling those studios to actually make the games they want to make. Yeah, like the studio. I'm, the studios I'm, they I'm got still, don't yeah. doesn't feel like uh, the studios that Sony has that keep pumping out the same concept of a game with different True. skins. Uh, yeah, like they they did announce a Hell, Hellblade Two, which I'm still a little concerned about because I don't think we needed a Hellblade Two. But you know what? It, it's cool. But cool then, gonna but then Xbox also killed Scalebound, so mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, they That's they probably true. did not buy the. I like I, I I sincerely hope that Phil Spector did not buy all those studios just to, or Phil Spencer did, bought those studios just to carve out all the creativity from them. See, yeah. So here's here's something that really boggles my mind is that Obsidian was also bought by Microsoft, right? Yeah. Okay, so in the book, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, there is a chapter dedicated to, uh, what was it, Pillars of Eternity, right? Yeah. During that during that chapter, uh, it also went over the fact that Obsidian had a prior project that they were working with Microsoft on, and then Microsoft canceled it, and it nearly broke the company. So why the fuck are Obsidian now okay with being bought out by Microsoft? I have no because idea. Because Obsidian is no, a no, broke no. studio. They don't have any choice, really. Fergus Urquhart has people working under him who, you know, they have mortgages and they have families they need uh, to feed. But are you, aren't, aren't all you I, talking all about... All I can say is, all I can say is I sincerely hope that the nature of the contract between Obsidian and Microsoft is much more favorable to them than it was when they were working with them previously. Aren't you talking about that M- that kind of MMO game, third-person action game that was like supposed to be a really innovative concept? There, there I have believe been, so. It's been a while since I there read. There have been articles Pixels. about that. If we mean the same game, and to me, it sounded like they just couldn't really, like it didn't sound like either of the parties were really to blame. They just, they didn't really have an idea of what the game was supposed to be, and both the publisher and the developer had different visions of it, and they just couldn't get to some kind of understanding. That may that may have been the case, but I I still, it still does strike me as strange that like given what had happened with that project, that they would be okay with getting bought out by Microsoft. Sure. But the, but you know whatever. I, I again, I just hope that Obsidian knows what they're doing. Mo- hasn't that, most of the yeah. creative team over at Obsidian? Haven't they most most of them left? Yeah, yeah, that too. I mean, Chris Avalon isn't there anymore, and uh, no. uh, what the hell is his face? Uh, Sawyer, just Josh. Sawyer? Josh Sawyer, yeah, he's gone, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Well, are they freelance now? Yeah. Not Chris, Chris Avalon. Chris Avalon, he's he, he's a uh, he's doing really good for himself. He's yeah working out a bunch of different projects. So good for him. Good for him. Don't overstress yourself. Friend of the pod, well, friend of me, not the podcast. <laughs> Chris Avalon. Did I ever tell you guys about the time I uh, met Chris Avalon? <laughs> yes, you made a video about it. <laughs> this is like a fish story that keeps getting more and more elaborate every time I tell it. It's not just that I called him up on Skype, now I met him. So I had Chris, Al- Thanks, Chris Avalon over, and uh, we had a talk about KOTOR. And, uh... Did you serve him eggs and chicken? Oh, why, Chris Avalon is still here. Hi, Chris. Would you like to say hello? No? Oh. Sorry, guys. He uh, He just left. No... I think that's the yeah. End of the we're getting into just <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> uh, that's what happens at the two and a half hour mark. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Acer, are you working on anything? Yes, I made the Deus Ex video. It's it's still unlisted at the time of recording, but it'll probably be up when this video goes up, I imagine. Uh, and I'm also making a Kingsfield two video. And if I have time before the end of the month, I'm gonna make. Uh, Kingsville 3 video, or at least write the script for it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Boken, are you working on anything? I'm working on my Kirby's Dream Course video, which you guys oh, yeah, you were asking used to help me with. No, no. I uh, Send me the script. I'll take a look at it. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't know why Daniel didn't offer to help. <laughs> I specifically called his name. Yeah. Uh, I I would I, I you know like, I don't mind right? checking it out for you if you want, but I don't have any intuitive knowledge on how to structure anything. So I don't know <laughs> what just, help just I can read have. Read it and tell me I don't understand this or this sounds weird. Ah, okay, here, just put it up. It's I'll not check like it out. All the YouTube viewers have an intuitive understanding of how to structure things. <laughs> sure. The mouth breathing masses. <laughs> But yeah, right now I'm I'm still. I felt like I should maybe play it a little bit more, even though the script is finished. And I looked up after the the speed run. I looked up a guide of how to get hole in ones for every course, and I'm just following those instructions to <laughs> see what you can get out of the the just shooting system. All right. Interesting. Very interesting. All right. Uh, so. I don't know if it'll be up by the time this this uh, episode is up, but I sh I uh, should be done with uh, my gun gray video. weren't you gonna make a Silent Hill four video? The script for that is still huh. I want to say like halfway finished. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah, I'm like I just say working on a Silent Hill four script. So that'll be fun. Um, I have a few other things I'm working on. So part two of Zysteria script for that is done. I just need to edit that. And something that has been delayed for like a full year. And I don't want to get into the details as to why. Uh, but I have a video on the beginner's guide. And uh, there were some complications regarding that. That had been finally cleared up so hopefully that can come out soonish as well all right then but all right one of these days that's one it. of these days we should do an essay topic on breath of the wild where we just argue at each other <laughs> no i've been meaning to replay breath of the wild so because i played the wii u version and then i sold it and got the switch version mm. so uh and uh, and on the switch version i decided to buy the dlc as well so uh, yeah mm. I feel like we talked about Breath of the Wild enough. <laughs> we all know why we clearly, stand on it. We all like it. Cle <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, we all like keep, it. Clearly, we have not talked about it enough. <laughs> you keep fucking jabbing at me. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I think it's a good game. I just feel like it was... I feel like people fell in love with it more than I did. The praise has been overstated. I wouldn't even say that. It's just that it... Because I, I don't. Totally disagree. I I feel like the praise is what the praise is. I just feel like it's, I, it just didn't click for me the way it did for so many people, and it's crap, and I hate it, and everybody who plays it is just a fool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, you know what? I'd I probably it. be lot, a lot more uh, favorable to it if it hadn't gotten the reception it got. Oh, so you're one of those contrarians? Yes. And also, that's that's right, that's, that's it, not everyone. that's not criticism coming from you. You're a contrarian too, Bogan. Shut up! How it's time to end the podcast. Uh, you know, I said that, but then I can't think think of any examples. <laughs> Maybe one. Oh my god! Goodbye, everyone. Daniel dramatically trying to end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the podcast doesn't end until we stop talking. <laughs> the podcast will never end. Uh, bye. Bye. Boken, say bye. Uh, why? Just do it. It already ended. <laughs> I don't have to say bye. <laughs> you said it. There we go. Gotcha. Fucking bitch. <laughs> 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 <laughs>